This is a job. This is NYPD. Job. The NYPD. Job. The NYPD. If you're 21 or over with two years of college or two years of active military service, join us now. Call 212 Recruit to become a New York City police officer. It's not just a job, it's the NYPD. I'm Pat Kernan with the New York One Minute. It is primary day. Nearly 200 candidates are on various ballots around the city. The most notable citywide race is the Democratic battle for mayor. Recent polls have shown Mark Green and Fernando Ferrer in a dead heat. Alan Hevesy and Peter Vallone have lagged behind. On the Republican side, polls show Michael Bloomberg with a sizable lead over Herman Padillo. Other races include public advocate and controller. New York One will have coverage throughout the day and wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the results tonight. A man and a woman have been hospitalized in Queens after being shot inside a parking garage. Police say they were involved in a fight and gunfire erupted. More insecticide spraying to combat the West Nile virus on Staten Island has been ordered. Aerial spraying scheduled for later this week. Teachers at 10 City Catholic High School say they're ready to strike. They're looking for a pay increase and better benefits. And if you're a Knicks season ticket holder, opening night at the Garden could be special this year. Michael Jordan's all but confirmed a comeback. We will have more on our top stories. We'll also update the morning commute. But first, here's a check of the forecast. Humidity is low today, so we are going to escape the kind of rain that we saw yesterday. It'll be mostly sunny today, a high of 82. Clear skies tonight, mostly sunny tomorrow. We'll get up to 78. Turns mostly cloudy on Thursday, though. Chance of shower, 76 degrees. And uh, much cooler Friday and Saturday. On Friday, partly sunny and 70 degrees. A high of only 69 on Saturday. Here in New York One, you can get weather updates up to 12 times an hour. The campaigning speeches, TV ads are over for the moment, although they may start up again tomorrow. But uh, for now, it is the primary, and dozens of races citywide are at stake today. Uh, it is Election Day. New York One's John Schumo uh, begins our coverage this morning with uh, the details about what's going on at the polls. John? Good morning, Pat. Certainly there is a lot at stake. Nearly 250 candidates are seeking office on this primary day. More than 35 council seats are up. The public advocate is up. The city controller up. And, of course, the mayor. The one race is getting most of the attention. Also, four of the five borough president races also facing primaries today. We are here at the Asher Levy Pool and Recreation Center on the east side of Manhattan. As of 8 o'clock this morning, only 99 people had voted. Now in this district, there are 2,700 eligible voters. The man running the show down here, the coordinator of this uh, turnout here, said it's average to poor turnout so far this morning. And I've been speaking with voters outside this polling location, and yes, they're painting a very dismal picture of how the candidates inspired them during the course of this campaign season. The usual hollow promises, most of which they're not going to be able to keep, but we're going to try hard to help them. A skeptical voter. No, realistic voter. I mean, they can't, you can't have a great teacher in every classroom and do all the things they all promised. No one is saying anything that uh, stands out. I mean, for me, my main concern is housing. I mean, our rent is going up. And for uh, education, I just took my kid out of public school and I'm a teacher. So you add it up. I'm uninspired. I, I voted for mayor and I voted for uh, controller and uh, uh, city advocate, but uh, uninspired. And why is that? Because the, none of them have any charisma. Uh, none of them have any th dynamics, and, that, and that's what I'm looking for. And, uh, and you didn't find it? No, not in any of the candidates. But I'm here because it's my duty to vote. Of course, it is that man's duty to vote. Uh, you must be uh, over 18 years of age. You must be a U.S. citizen. And, of course, you need to be registered in a party to vote today during the primary. I want to show you what the ballot looks like if you're going to go inside your voting booth. This is what you can expect to see. This is a uniform. Uh, procedure throughout the five boroughs. First column, you'll see the Democratic candidates for mayor. 
Peter Vallone, Fernando Ferrer, Mark Green, Alan Hevesy, and George Spitz. Below that, you will then see the Democratic candidates for public advocate. And below that, down here, the Democratic candidates for controller. Up here in the second column will be your, your individual council district. We're here in Councilmanic District Number 4. Uh, each district, there are 51 of them, will have their own specific uh, names listed here if indeed their uh, district is up for this primary. The third and the fourth columns are for the delegates uh, for judge, for the judicial convention. Now, are we in a democratic city? I want to come over here and show you the little pink one here for the Republican candidates for mayor. There are only two of them. That's all you'll find on the Republican ballot. And of course, Mr. Michael Bloomberg and Mr. Herman Badillo. And Pat, the polls opened at 6 this morning. They will be open until 9 tonight. So far, as the gentleman who is coordinating this effort down here at Asher Levy said, it is average to poor turnout. Of course, we'll be monitoring this all day long. For now, the reporting here from the east side of Manhattan. I'm John Schumer. Pat, let's go back to you in the newsroom. Okay, John, thank you. On their last big campaign swings, all of the candidates crisscrossed the city. Yesterday, Mark Green spent his final hours courting the black vote in Brooklyn and Harlem. Green focused on his likely runoff challenger, Fernando Ferrer, accusing Ferrer of changing positions on major issues. I simply commented on the fact that he was uh, anti-choice and uh, pro-death penalty in 1997 and happily has a uh, different position in 2001. Green ended his day by dining with prospective voters at Junior's Restaurant in Brooklyn. Fernando Ferrer looked to win support from the city's Jewish voters in his final campaign push. Ferrer reached out to the Sadmar community in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and received a blessing from their Grand Rebbe. The move was aimed to address criticism. He's too focused on black and Latino voters. He's a very holy man. Um, he's an eminent man. Um, and... Um, I thought it was appropriate. Uh, I mean, look, if you're going to, if, if you wish and aspire to represent all of New York, this is a door on which you must knock. Ferrer ended his day at local 1199 for a final pre-primary rally. Trailing in the polls, Alan Hevesy made his last campaign hours count. The city controller zeroed in on likely primary voters including the elderly at a senior center in Manhattan. He also talked to parents in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. Have, as he says, don't count him out just yet. The number of people saying we're for you was very, very uh, encouraging. Uh, I believe we're going to win this race. I think we're getting in a runoff. We're going to win this race. The latest polls show Hevesy trailing front runners for rare and green by at least 10 points. Peter Vallone got an early start on his day. He cast his vote this morning at a school in Astoria before heading out for one final campaign day with stops planned in Queens and Manhattan. Yesterday, the city council speaker was looking for support in all five boroughs. He continued his attack against uh, Fernando Ferrer's theme of two New Yorks while trying to get people to come out and vote. Malone focused on getting his own supporters out. Every single vote counts. And uh, I won the, uh, I've been underestimated my entire life in terms of my public life. And I think that's the advantage I have going into this. He is behind in the polls, but Vallone says he's confident he will be back for a runoff in two weeks. The Republican contenders for mayor have been busy trying to encourage New Yorkers to get to the polls. Michael Bloomberg attended several get-out-the-vote rallies yesterday, including one in the Bronx. He appeared at the senior center with State Senator Guy Valella, who earlier had endorsed Terman Badillo. Bloomberg continued to defend himself on a booklet that critics charge attacks many different groups. Bloomberg maintains the whole thing was a joke. People said that that's what dirty politics is all about, and if it is, it is. Uh, uh, there's nothing else I can say about it. It's, uh, I've never read it. I was given it uh, 10 years ago as a gag, and uh, uh, probably never saw it after that day. Badillo made a final push for GOP voters in the party's stronghold of Staten Island yesterday. He also continued to hammer away at Bloomberg over the controversial booklet. I know as a lawyer that there's no confidentiality agreement that protects an employer from being racist and sexist and anti-gay. Recent polls show Badillo trailing Bloomberg among Republican voters by a wide margin. Much attention is focused on the mayor's race, but there are two other big citywide races. Seven candidates are vying for the Democratic nomination for public advocate. They are City Councilman Stephen DeVarienza, former Parks Commissioner Betsy Gottbaum, State Assemblyman Scott Stringer, Civil Liberties Advocate Norman Siegel, Salsa Singer Willie Colon, uh, Councilwoman Catherine Freed and speech pathologist Sheila Flaxman. Two Democrats are competing for the post of city controller. 
former Board of Education President Bill Thompson and City Councilman Herb Berman. Good morning, New York. I'm Kat Greenleaf, back with another look at your commute. Subways continue to be great on or close to schedule. No problems or delays so far this morning. Inbound Gowanus, traffic is heavy right now from the Belt Parkway merge all the way to the Brooklyn Bridge. Your southbound BQE slow from the LIE out to the Williamsburg. Outbound Gowanus past the prospect. There is a crash now blocking the left lane. Northbound FDR heavy tra traffic from the Brooklyn Bridge to Houston, where that crash is cleared, and then you're slow from the 30s to the 59th Street Bridge, where there is an accident on the shoulder. Southbound Harlem River Drive, slow from the 140s down to the 70s. Eastbound Staten Island Expressway at Clove Road, that accident is still out there. They're trying to get it cleared away. Eastbound on the Belt at Rockway Boulevard, that earlier crash has been cleared. Westbound Belt, typically slow right now, passing JFK all the way to the Knapp Street, where that earlier crash has cleared. Don't forget, street cleaning rules are in effect today citywide, so do be careful as you park your car. That's the latest Rail and Road Report. Kat Greenleaf, New York One. Hey, don't walk like a cop, all right? You say you're serious about doing some good in the real world. Well, this is the place to learn. Even those sworn to protect... Please get away from the girl! ...are human. What's wrong with street justice? Oh, I just let the animals wipe themselves out. God willing. Even those dedicated to keeping the peace... ...can cross the line. That's what I'm talking about. Denzel Washington. You think I'm crazy, right? Ethan Hawke. I think you're a rogue cop. Training Day. Boom. Rated R. Starts September 21st. For mayor, New York's teachers and tenants endorse controller Alan Hevesy. Why? Career educator Alan Hevesy has the best education record and the plan to fix our schools. And tenants can count on him to save rent protection. Pro-choice, Alan Hevesy saved the city's drinking water, protected nursing home patients, and won Holocaust restitution. Smart and caring, Alan Hevesy's tough enough to take Rudy's place. Democrat Alan Hevesy, most experienced, best qualified. Time for weather on the ones. A cooling trend later this week, but it'll be mostly sunny and quite nice today. Our high, 82. Northwest wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Skies will be crystal clear tonight and a pleasant low temperature of 62. You might be able to give that air conditioner a rest. Uh, the wind tonight north at 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Seasonable high temperature of 78 degrees. Take a look at our five-day forecast now, and you can see that it is going to get cooler toward the end of the week. On Thursday, a chance of shower of 76 degrees. Friday and Saturday, high temperatures right around 70. Here's a traveler's forecast now. Conditions and expected high temperatures in selected cities across the nation. Remember, here in New York One, weather on the ones comes every 10 minutes. In the Papers is sponsored by 1-800-SLEEPYS. Sleepy's the mattress professionals, home of the incredible price guarantee. Here's a look at what's in the Tuesday Papers. Election coverage seems the obvious place to start today, so uh, we will begin with the front page of the Times. Great selection of photographs here on the front page of the Times. Uh, top left, uh, Fernando Ferrer, uh, then over to Peter Vallone, and then on the second line, you see Mark Green and Alan Hevesy all at uh, various campaign events throughout the city yesterday. Uh, the Times, as with all the papers, recaps its endorsements this morning on the editorial page. Mark Green was the Times' choice for mayor. The Times is the most comprehensive list uh, of endorsements, uh, right down to all of the uh, individual council races. The Daily News endorsed Peter Vallone on the Republican side, Michael Bloomberg, for the GOP. In the Post, it was an endorsement for Peter Vallone. And Newsday made its call for Alan Hevesy on the Democratic side and for Michael Bloomberg for the Republicans. Let me show you the front page of Newsday. It is a, a tease to the primary coverage inside. The headline is Pick'em. Page A4 of Newsday, already looking ahead. Uh, to what's next for Alan Hevesy. If the polls are right and Hevesy fails to advance to a runoff, then uh, he is, would still be on the ballot on the liberal line. Uh, however, one top Democrat interviewed by Newsday says if Hevesy aspires to run for any office in the future, he would best not campaign on the liberal ticket, but rather throw his support behind the Democratic winner. For the front page of the Post, the headline is Green's Primary Colors. The Post positioning Mark Green as the candidate to beat tonight. Uh, interesting feature on page five of the post, uh, photographer Tamara Beckwith lined up eight residents of Cobble Hill for this shot, and uh, all of them in the captions explain uh, the, the, who they're going to vote for. Uh, four of them already decided, committed to Mark Green, one for Vallone, uh, one for Hevesy, and two of the people in this photo undecided. 
elsewhere in the post. Now, did you know there's a little battery in your Easy Pass? Uh, apparently, it's supposed to last 10 years, but some people have been having trouble with their Easy Pass batteries after just three years. If the battery goes dead, you don't find out until you pull into the Easy Pass lane, and then you get the full toll elevator treatment with the the, the guy in the uh, orange vest coming over and, and giving you heck for trying to avoid the toll. I mean, eventually you'll work things out, but it's a it, it's a, an inconvenience. State officials say they're looking into this. Uh, New York Pulse section, strip away the flab. Exercise crash at uh, class at Crunch Fitness called Cardio Strip Tease. Based on the popular moves of strip tease, says instructor Jeff Costa, you grind your hips, you isolate your pelvis, you peel off your clothes. Not all of them, but some of them. Front page of the Daily News this morning. The headline is Cops Bag Panther. I got a look at this from a distance at first and, and thought this is one of those animal rescue stories. Uh, in fact, a reference to a Black Panther splinter group blamed for a 1971 gun battle on Broadway. Thirty years later, investigators figured this out, tracked down a Mount Vernon school teacher named Patrick Critton and arrested him. Page two of the Daily News, the latest effort to make Queens Boulevard safer. They put up barricades on, uh, between the 70th Road and Union Turnpike to try to discourage people from crossing in the middle of a block. Catholic teachers. That uh, possible strike continues to loom over the Catholic high schools in the city. Interesting table up there at the top. The average salary for a Catholic teacher in the city, $32,000. That compares to the average city public school teacher salary of 49000 Troubled times for Whitney Houston uh, in the Daily News this morning. Word that she uh, canceled uh, her appearance at the second of the Michael Jackson concerts last night. She looked horrible on Friday when she played the concert. Uh, those who were there said she appeared skeletal and frail and was moving stiffly. Uh, the Daily News cites sources close to Houston who say the problem is drugs and uh, more specifically a refusal to do anything about it. To the New York Times now, on the front page of the Times, uh, below the fold, is this story uh, about a topic uh, close to our hearts. Morning television and morning news in particular. A hot market, according to the Times. I could have told you that. Uh, the, the, the reason that morning news is so hot is changing demographics. In fact, is people just uh, don't have time to watch the evening news like they used to. But morning news tends to be a time when there are quality viewers available, and there isn't a lot on other channels. So uh, they tend to find their way to news programs. Uh, the uh, catalyst for the story is the decision last week by CNN to hire Paula Zahn to host a new morning show in the tradition of the network morning shows. And the Times illustrates how important this is to uh, CNN by pointing out that uh, her salary will be the most money by far that CNN has ever paid for an anchor. A uh, reminder of our disclosure here that CNN, of course, is, uh, as New York One is, part of the AOL Time Warner family. Uh, also on the front page of the Times, school dress codes versus a sea of bare flesh. The fashions for this fall, uh, girls in particular, are proving a challenge for schools as they try to put in reasonable dress codes for kids, uh, rules like you can't bear your midriff. Uh, one school came up with, your, your, you can't use spaghetti straps, you have to have straps that are an inch and a half wide, and then girls started showing up in these one shoulder tops, so then they had to amend the dress code again to say that your inch and a half straps have to be on both shoulders. Uh, one principal says, we said a, a thing that shorts had to have at least a, a five-inch inseam, but nobody could find shorts that had a five-inch inseam, so we had to, to rescind that rule because we would have had to make them all shop at Talbot's. She said it was the only place where they had five-inch inseams. Uh, science time section, a look at dental implants this morning, increasingly used as an alternative to dentures, expensive, but uh, said to be a very successful procedure. An interesting feature on uh, the second page of the sports section of the Times, Bronx-born Judy Israel one of the top professionals in the world of bass fishing, a world dominated by men to the point that uh, they, they called them bass fishermen, uh, except she, you know, they asked her, should we call you a fisher woman, fisher person? And she says, hey, call, call me an angler. And it's a, a gender neutral term for the fisher people. That's what's in the papers on this Tuesday morning. Here's a quick look at the forecast. Temperatures rising to 82 degrees today. Sunshine this morning, some clouds this afternoon. More details coming up in Weather on the Ones. Sleepy's amazing one-day mattress sale is tomorrow, 10 to 9. Your chance to save 20% on famous brand mattresses like Sealy, Simmons, Serta, and more. 
That's an extra 20% off other stores' advertised prices or get the mattress free plus $500. Finance and pay no interest for six months. Get delivery everywhere, every day. Plus great premium bonus offers. That's Sleepy's One Day Sale. Just Sleepy's for the rest of your life. Shop tomorrow, 10 to 9. This edition of Today in New York City History is sponsored by New York Presbyterian Hospital, the University Hospitals of Columbia and Cornell. Call 1-877-NYP-WELL or visit our website at www.nyp.org. On September 11th, in 1850, Jenny Lind, the singer dubbed the Swedish Nightingale, makes her American debut before a sellout crowd at Castle Garden. And in 1967, despite a temporary restraining order, city teachers go out on strike on the first day of the new school year. They stay out until September 29th. That's today in New York City history. This is a live picture from our camera on the Empire State Building looking toward the World Trade Center. A three-alarm fire and a report of an explosion somewhere in the World Trade Center. You can see the uh, plume of smoke from the top of one of the World Trade Center towers. And uh, this has just come into us, word of this uh, incident at the World Trade Center. The fire department responding with a large number of crews to the World Trade Center. I don't have a lot more detail on this uh, than that at the moment, but uh, you can see, obviously, there's a lot of smoke there. And at that height uh, of the World Trade Center, obviously, a very difficult fire to fight. Uh, we have someone uh, in the area who's seen some of this happen. George Shea is on the telephone. Uh, George, uh, t tell me uh, what your vantage point is and what do you know about this place? I'm on um, West Street right out of the uh, Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. And I was driving in and I heard an enormous explosion. Then I heard another enormous explosion. And it scared me. I looked out the window and an enormous tire, what appeared to be a tire, smashed down on the street in front of me and I looked out and there was enormous amount of debris and we were about two or three or four blocks down from the World Trade Center. If this is the, the northern building in the World Trade Center, there was an enormous amount of debris and I yelled to the guy in the car, let me out, and I ran back. Uh, a gentleman next to me had been hit by debris and it appears to be about 20 stories from uh, the top on the west side of the uh, of, of the northern World Trade Building, and it, it appears that an entire floor or two have been blown out, um, and it was just it was the most it was the scariest thing I've ever seen. So, so Georgia, what's your location now? Uh, I mean, what what can you see at this moment? I'm on West Street, facing north, about four or five blocks below the World Trade Towers, and um, I ran further down. Um, and there's an enormous amount of smoke pouring out of the building. It appears to be on the west and south sides of the uh, World Trade Tower. As I said, about 20 or 30 stories um, down. I don't know how many stories are in the building, but about uh, 85 or 90 per percent up the building. And if anybody was up there, it's going to be very, very scary because enormous amount of damage. Uh, George, I want you to stay on the line with me because uh, this is some important information for us, but I'm just getting word from our... Uh, assignment desk that we have information that a plane has crashed into the side of the World Trade Center and and I do not know any more about what type of airplane it is or or how this happened. Uh, uh, George Shea again a, a witness who's been in the area and heard this explosion. George would would that be consistent with uh, with what you heard? It would only be speculation but it would it would explain why a wheel crashed on West Street about 15 or 20 feet from the car that I was in. Um, otherwise, where would that wheel have come from? Because this is not anywhere near the ground. This is very, very far up in the air. So it, if, if that's true, it would appear that the wheel um, was thrown about four blocks um, south. And it's, it's uh, you know, m from my uh, position, I can see on the south and west side of the building that there appears to be damage and perhaps it actually struck the south portion of that building. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, I'm on the phone with George Shea who was uh, traveling on the ground just out of the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel uh, in the area of the World Trade Center when he heard an explosion and uh, uh, George has uh, been kind enough to call us with some of the information uh, about this incident as we look at live pictures of the World Trade Center. Uh, an airplane crashing into the side of the World Trade Center. Uh, this happening, uh, is, as far as I can tell, about 10 minutes ago. And uh, live pictures 
from the scene. Uh, George, again, tell me that you, you, you saw a wheel drop uh, to the street in front of you. Uh, the... it, was, it was just, it was absolutely shocking. You can imagine everybody was just sort of uh, driving north on West Street below, um, you know, up into Manhattan. And it was very sort of typical, moderate traffic. And then suddenly there was an enormous explosion, and it, it appeared another explosion, as I recall correctly. And then literally I looked out, I, w I wasn't certain what it was, and a wheel crashed onto the street um, about 10 or 15 feet from my, uh, the car that I was in, and it, it, scared, it scared me to death. And I, uh, I jumped out of the car. Everybody else was jumping out of cars and running south away from it, and there was additional debris sort of raining down. And it was very confusing, and I think everybody immediately assumed it was a bomb. Um, and it, it, I couldn't reconcile why there would have been a wheel unless for some, you know, it, it made no sense. Um, but, but I did see a wheel, and uh, now the police um, have sort of blocked off the entire area, and uh, people are, you know, standing well away from the building. But immediately following um, the explosion, people were just running south, um, fearing that there'd be additional, you know, explosions. Uh, George, and, and, and again, if you can tell me uh, your location, and, and are they now moving people out of the area? Is there some sort of evacuation in that area? Well, you know, it, you know the, the police responded immediately. It was astounding, but, I mean, I, I, they are now doing that. They've moved the cars out, and I'm at, you know, right um, sort of almost down to the bottom of Battery Park City. I can't see the street, but it's right where the... It's right where the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel empties out onto West Street, um, and it's about um, it's about five blocks down from the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, George Shea, I, I appreciate you calling us this morning with this information. I, I, I'm going to let you go and speak to somebody else. I'd appreciate it, though, if you'd uh, just uh, stay on the line or give our producers a call back and let us know how we can, can stay in touch with you if we do need some more information from, uh, from your location. Very uh, good. Thank you very much for calling us. Uh, also on the line for us this morning, uh, Steve Sterling, uh, who was in the area as well and uh, has called us with some information. Steve, can you hear me? Steve, are you there? All right, I was, uh, was told that we had uh, Steve Sterling. Uh, St Steve, let me try once more. Are you with me? Yes, I am. Uh, tell me what, uh, what your location is and what you've seen. Uh, we're on Beach Street between Hudson and Greenwich, uh, six floors up in a warehouse loft, and we're about uh, six blocks north of the north tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, just so happens we have breakfast at uh, this window, which uh, looks at the, at the World Trade Centers, which is usually a pretty glorious sight. Now it's one of the most frightening things I've ever seen. But we were just sitting there and heard, uh, you know, what was obviously a very fast, very low-flying uh, aircraft, and I had just said to my wife, said, wow, that must be a military plane or something, although it sounded like a propeller airplane, but you can see from where we're looking that uh, it actually, you can see the exact imprint of the airplane, so when we looked up, we literally, at the very second, uh, saw this, this plane just, just plow into the building, a huge plume of fire, which I assume was the fuel from the airplane. But if you look at the World Trade Center from our vantage point, you can actually just see a complete outline uh, of an airplane making a left bank. Uh, Steve, uh, did you have any idea what type of plane it was? Was it a what? Was it a large plane? Uh, no, I'm really guessing, but I would say it was a uh, a single engine propeller plane. At first, I thought it was a jet, um, just because we could hear it from the the north end of our building coming across. Um, but it seemed like it must have been a very, very high-speed uh, propeller plane because it just had the, the sound of that. But uh, I really can't be sure. No. But we were able to see, I mean, literally when we looked up, the huge plume of smoke, and then we, we could see the, uh, it, the impact blew out the windows uh, on the southwest corner. Um, and the fire is now burning on floors above where the initial impact was, and it's coming up. Uh, you know, all through the building. It's just, it, it's just, it's real. I still have chills. It's the most staggering sight I've ever seen, and um, I can't imagine what was going on, but that plane was really traveling at high speed. I mean, the only times we've ever heard aircraft fly over us like that are usually during some sort of, you know, military exhibition on the Hudson River, but it was really going fast. And obviously very low. I mean, I don't know, you know, what, what pictures you're seeing, but the, the World Trade Center is about 110 stories, and uh, it's, it's really only about uh, a fourth of the way down from the top. So, Steve, uh, 
stay with me here. And, and uh, you, you said you weren't sure what pictures we're looking at. We've got quite a wide shot uh, of the World Trade Center. It's the, the view from our camera at the Empire State Building. Uh, when, when I saw a, a closer shot a few moments ago, there, there is a, a tremendous amount of damage on two sides, uh, almost as though the, uh, the debris of the plane moved into the Trade Center Tower from one side and, and literally sort of uh, crashed out the other side. Uh, and well, we're, where yeah. we're looking at it, you can see a, a hole. There is a, there's like, it's literally the silhouette of a, of a left banking airplane plugged through. And also, if you see on the, uh, the southwest corner of the building, uh, when it hit, we saw actually the, either the pressure or the airplane, the, the impact of the airplane or momentum of it just blow out the other side. So we can't see the south-facing side. I can tell a lot of smoke's coming up, and we're, we're actually zoomed in on our video camera shooting it now. But as soon as that thing hit, it was a huge fireball, I mean, bigger than the top of the building, and then everything was pushing out the other side of the building. And from where we look, I, I, I hope it's an optical illusion, but it really looks like the World Trade Center, the North Tower, is bending to the west, and certainly the debris that's pushing out from the, the west-facing wall uh, is all the way up to the top of the building. Are you in any position, Steve, to see uh, what sort of evacuation is going on there now? No, we were seeing, um, you know, uh, we were looking through, we were seeing fire starting on, on various floors around the actual, uh, the hole that the, that the craft made in the building. Um, but we couldn't see any people um, or anything, but uh, we saw tremendous debris from, you know, just all kinds of bits of things just, just literally just burst out of the building once the, uh, once the fire, uh, the fireball subsided. Again, I'm on the phone with Steve Sterling, uh, one of several eyewitnesses who has called us after seeing this plane crash at the World Trade Center. Uh, is uh, Steve, are you still there? Yes. Uh, l l let me ask you one more question before I, I let you go. Uh, we've been looking at shots of the, the north face of the World Trade Center, and I can see uh, damage on, on the, the western facing side of the building as well. Which side of... Uh, of the building was the initial impact on? Uh, on the north side. If you can see the north side, if you look to the lower section, uh, you literally can see from lower left to upper right, if you can imagine it, uh, it, it really to us right here looks like the impact of wings with a center fuselage. It, it's as if you drew the outline of a single engine airplane onto the building. It just it looks like from here uh, that it just plowed right in uh, on, a, on a left banking turn. Uh, Steve Sterling, uh, another of uh, the eyewitnesses, has uh, called us with information. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for your comments, Steve. We appreciate it. Sure thing. Uh, World Trade Center, 110 stories tall, built in 1973. Uh, as, uh, as you look down at the World Trade Center buildings, uh, you see that it is uh, one World Trade Center that is the one uh, where the, the impact was. Uh, one World Trade Center is uh, the one with the, the large television antenna on it and uh, the uh, restaurant uh, windows on the world is in that tower. The other one is the one with the observation deck. Uh, at this point, the Associated Press uh, with uh, a story that says there is uh, no report of any casualties uh, without jumping to too many conclusions, looking at the extent of this damage and uh, knowing how well populated that building is. At that, oh, now there's another explosion down to the left side on the second World Trade Center tower. You see that uh, that huge ball of fire that just went up there. I know it's a, it's quite a distant shot, but that looked to me to be happening at number two World Trade Center, at the second World Trade Center tower, uh, and and it is at some distance there. But uh, this is now a dramatic development on the second World Trade Center tower, and uh, I, I can't imagine that uh, that there would not be a, a, a serious evacuation, and. Uh, uh, a full mobilization now, uh, emergency command center, and so forth, as the fire department moves as much equipment as possible to the World Trade Center. Uh, if I can get uh, our, our crews to take a bit of the tape, I'd, I'd like to see that explosion again uh, from about 30 seconds ago, if we could, if we can, if we can get that back, because it had looked as though this was confined to one of the World Trade Center towers, but. Uh, now, with that explosion a moment ago, it's not clear what's happening because a as we looked at that impact, it appeared that this was happening uh, just at the number one World Trade Center tower, but that explosion clearly, as I saw it on that uh, distant shot, came 
from two World Trade Center Tower, and we now have a mobilization at both of the World Trade Center Towers. Uh, again, World Trade Center uh, built in 1973, 110 stories tall. Uh, this, uh, this building, uh, of course, the scene of the explosion, the bombing there uh, many years ago, but uh, uh, this is uh, like nothing that has been seen at the World Trade Center. We have that tape now? This is, this is about a minute and a half ago. Watch on the left side on the number two World Trade Center tower. Uh, again, as I said, that, uh, that shot at some distance, but uh, that explosion coming through the World Trade Center tower has now ripped a, a second hole in the World Trade Center tower. And uh, the, uh, the fire department uh, back on the scene. This is live pictures now. Do we have another uh, eyewitness on the telephone? World Trade Center, 1,362 feet tall. They are the tallest two buildings in New York. Uh, number one World Trade Center is the one with the television antenna on it. That's where we saw the initial impact after this plane crash at the World Trade Center. And uh, we're, we're trying to ascertain at this point what would have caused that massive explosion that ripped through number two World Trade Center, the tower on the left, just a few moments ago. Uh, it was 1993 when the terrorist bomb uh, ripped about a 200-foot crater at the lower levels of the World Trade Center. Uh, there are about 40,000 people working in the World Trade Center, and with this happening uh, sometime about uh, 8.45... Okay, well, we may have an explanation now. I I'm sorry, I'm just getting some information. We may have an explanation for what happened there when we saw that second explosion because the, the towers are far enough apart that you would think they were independent. Uh, we have uh, uh, two of our people responding to the area saying that they saw another aircraft crash into the, the other tower of the World Trade Center. I don't know at this point whether that would be a, a plane that was in the area, uh, whether it would be a news helicopter or a police helicopter or something like that, but uh, that's the word we're getting now, is that uh, after all of this, after the mayhem going on at one World Trade Center, there was a second aircraft that crashed into the other World Trade Center tower, and that explains uh, that explosion of a moment ago. Again, this is coming in from a couple of uh, our New York One employees who are, are responding to the area. And uh, I want to get back again to that, uh, that shot, if we can, of, uh, of a moment ago, just before we saw that, uh, that explosion at the... Deserve special treatment. Uh, numbers of EMS, like emergency vehicles, fire trucks, police vehicles, ESU, everything, everyone you can imagine is on their way there. You can hear the sirens just, and we we're right off the side. Um, so I'm assuming that whomever was in the building at that at that point, and you know, if there's anybody that needs to be 
taken to the hospital, they're well on their way because the sirens are blaring. Okay, Amanda, see if you can get any closer and uh, and uh, get together with our other crews there, and uh, and we'll be back to you. I, I appreciate the, the comments, though. Again, uh, to recap here, uh, not one, but now two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center towers. It was about 8.45 that a plane ripped into the tower at one World Trade Center, the one on the right side of your screen. And uh, to my eye, this would have happened uh, about 90 or 100 stories up. The building is 110 stories tall, and uh, the, uh, the plane appears to have struck somewhere between 90 and uh, 100 stories. Then, uh, I would say right about 9 o'clock, there was uh, a second plane crashed into number two World Trade Center. And, and as you just heard, uh, uh, this uh, did not appear to be accidental in that the plane was uh, was in control and uh, made a course directly for that tower at least that's the account of those who have seen it and uh, and reported back to us uh, we've got another uh, eyewitness on the telephone and and I'm sorry but I'm speaking and not not able to get the name at the same time who's on who's on the line with me yes can you hear me Bruce yes Bruce Pfeffer Bruce thank you for calling in for us tell me what uh, your vantage point is for all of this and what you've been seeing over the past 30 minutes well I was uh, running in Battery Park City along the river when the first crash happened and at first I thought it was a sonic boom from a jet because you can hear the jet first and then the crash or the explosion and I didn't even look up because I thought it was just a jet and, and a sonic boom and then another jogger along the river who was looking up started screaming, oh my God. And so I looked up and there were huge fireballs coming out of the World Trade Center. Then a few minutes later I came home, I live in Battery Park City, and I was watching New York One and I was actually calling to try to get through to you. And I heard the second jet flying very low overhead uh, and then another boom, another explosion. And obviously there are a lot of people in the street who were just staring up at the first fire, and they all started screaming and running south. And I'm not sure why they were running south, whether it was just to get a better look at it or maybe because debris was flying, but it was definitely a second jet. And since I was watching your program while I heard the second explosion, I saw you replay the tape and you can see on your tape replay the second jet coming from the right of the screen. Uh, we're going to see if we can get another look at that while, uh, while you speak to us is. here. You know what, I can, I can see it now, and maybe we can, uh, as the, the two of us talk, we'll take another, uh, another pass at that, and we may be able to digitally push into it a little bit and get a, a better look at it. So we'll go back to a live picture. Uh, of, of the World Trade Center and when we'll see if we can enhance that a little bit to get a better look at it But as you point that out the plane coming from the right side uh, you described it as a jet uh, Tell tell me what you saw what type of plane you think it was well. I didn't see in either instance. I, I didn't see it um, But I heard it and it definitely sounded like a jet because it it sounded like one of those military planes that you see at an air show uh, same type of sound of a low-flying jet uh, just you know very loud, fast engine noise. It definitely did not sound like a propeller plane, and it definitely did not sound like a helicopter. It was it was a jet of some kind, and it was the typical sound that you hear, you know, in a in a war movie of some kind, where first you hear the jet zooming overhead, and then you hear an explosion. Bruce, that's that's what it sounded Bruce, like. Uh, stay on the line with me here. We're gonna we've, we've managed to enhance this shot a little bit, and we're gonna replay it here. Okay. Uh, this is the shot of that second explosion. I see clearly that plane now approaching, passing the one tower, and there it is, impact to the second. So uh, it may have it may have been coming from Newark Airport because Newark Airport is in that direction. Well, and in fact, uh, now according to the Associated Press, uh, the FBI is investigating a report of a plane hijacking just before this crash at the World Trade Center. Uh, Myrtle's our director in the control room. Well, if we can get that back once more, if there's any possibility of. Uh, of a, of a slow motion as we play back that tape again. Uh, we're uh, looking, or we've got this shot of about nine o'clock, the second impact at the World Trade Center. Watch the right side of your screen, that airplane approaching the number two World Trade Center tower, about to crash into it now, and uh, there's the explosion. This happened uh, about nine o'clock this morning. Bruce Pfeffer on the telephone with me who saw that happen. 
Uh, Bruce, uh, nine o'clock. Is that about? Uh, did you look uh, at the time of that second crash? Because I've 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 lost yeah, track here I, now over the past few minutes. I, I I can't be certain, but it was probably about nine oh seven or something like that. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Bruce. Someone yeah. someone else was, was was speaking to me at the same time. If uh, if I, if I can just recap a couple of things, uh, mm -hmm. the FBI is now saying that. Uh, uh, they are looking into this report of, of a hijacking. I don't know what type of plane may have been hijacked, and we couldn't tell from that shot that we were looking at. Uh, Bruce, did, did it appear to you as, uh, uh, as you, you heard that, that sound? Uh, I know it's difficult to tell, but, but was there any hint that there was engine trouble, or was it just a, 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 a constant sound as you would hear a plane in normal flight? Yeah, in both cases, there was no hint of, uh, of an engine uh, you know, stuttering or any kind of uh, backfiring or anything. It sounded, as I as I said earlier, it sounded as as like uh, the jets that you see at an air show, where they're just zooming overhead and at very at, at a low altitude. And uh, in both cases, it just sounded like a continuous uh, roaring of the engine, and then followed by an explosion. Bruce, uh, as as you are are uh, looking in the area now, what what can you see? Well, I'm doing two things at once. I'm watching your <laughs> program, and I'm looking out my window, and uh, what my view is of, of a street in Battery Park City, and basically there are a lot of people milling around, looking up at the World Trade Center. There's a pretty clear view of, of the top of the towers, and people on cell phones, people uh, with cameras, people just walking back and forth. Of course, there were a lot of people on their way to work, uh, there were, just uh, about half an hour earlier, there were school buses leaving to take children to school. Um, I don't see a lot of chaos in the street, but, but obviously it's a happening, and, and a lot of people are milling around and looking up at the towers. Okay, Bruce Pfeffer, we thank you for calling in with the information you've given us, and uh, for your, your keen eye and seeing that, uh, that second plane coming in from the right side of the screen. This is another live picture now, a helicopter picture. Uh, again, we're looking here from the north, one World Trade Center on the right, two World Trade Center on the left, uh, I, I believe. I'm uh, having trouble getting my orientation on this. But one World Trade Center is where the initial impact occurred, and then the second plane crash happened at, uh, at two World Trade Center. We may be looking at this from the other side now. You know, we, we are. This is uh, south looking north because you can see the Empire State Building in the distance there. So uh, the two towers are, are reversed. In fact, the one on the left in this shot is one World Trade Center where the initial impact occurred and uh, two World Trade Center is on the right. And uh, if we can one more time get that uh, shot from just about nine o'clock this morning uh, when we saw the second impact and uh, again, as we see that shot, you should watch the right side of your screen because you'll actually be able to see that second plane coming in toward the World Trade Center. And uh, though uh, we can't uh, draw the conclusion immediately, as we see that shot of the plane coming in, uh, it appears to be on a deliberate course. Uh, there doesn't appear to be a lot of effort to uh, evade that. Are we going to be able to get that shot? All right, we'll, we'll try to get that shot up for you in just a moment. Eric, one's John Schumo. Uh, is on the phone with us now. John, what's your location, please? Uh, uh, Pat, uh, I'm actually in, of all places, uh, on this interrupted election day in Betsy Gottbaum's election office. All cell phone service is completely out, and I was running up Battery Park and noticed an open window. I ran inside this window and join you now by phone. Uh, absolutely stunned. Uh, this is one of the darkest days in our city's history. It is unbelievable. John, a sight John, I can't John, really imagine. John, give, give, give me a second here. Uh, if... Uh, if there's any question about uh, whether the uh, FBI is taking this as a, a possible terrorist attack, uh, we may have an answer in the fact that they have sealed the Lincoln and Holland tunnels now uh, as a precaution. Those tunnels are sealed at, at both ends, so they are not allowing traffic to pass through the Lincoln and Holland tunnels. Path train service is suspended, subway service bypassing the World Trade Center. Sorry for interrupting, John. You can continue. John, you still there? Pat, can you hear us? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're still here. Uh, you were talking about the tunnels, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, also right now sealed off. 
Uh, we came through the underpass of the Battery Tunnel, just making it around the south tip of the island of Manhattan. That, too, was just so crowded with emergency vehicles. I actually got out in the middle of the tunnel and ran the rest of the way. There are thousands of people out here on the streets, as you can imagine, uh, stunned. I saw two women crying uh, hysterically. It is an absolute scene that you can't even imagine. There are thousands of people here at Battery Park City. I want to bring in right now, if we have the time, uh, Jeffrey. I want to bring in uh, a man who works here at the Public Advocates uh, for Campaign office. I'm sorry, sir, you want to join us right now? We're live on New York One. Um, if you can just tell Pat Kiernan, our anchor, exactly what you saw while you were outside. Okay, I just had gotten out of the uh, number one train on Rector, and I noticed that the one tower was billowing smoke. And I was looking at it, and everyone was looking at it on the street, and all of a sudden I saw a blur on the other tower and a, just a massive explosion, a, f a fireball, uh, and debris, glass, paper, uh, shoes, just flew. And everyone on the street rushed, you know, away from the World Trade Center because they thought probably there was other explosions. So that's what I saw. I, apparently I saw the second plane hit the side of the World Trade Center and explode. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Um, so, sorry, can you, can you identify yourself for sure, us? Sure, my uh, name is Mark Benoit, and I'm uh, Pittsburgh Outbound's campaign manager. Uh, Mark, and, and what's, what's your location relative to the Trade Center? We are on uh, 50, Rector, uh, 50 uh, West Street, which is about three blocks due south of the World Trade Center. Mark, again, what, uh, you know, obviously our, our thoughts at this point turn to the people who were in the World Trade Center and for the people who were below the World Trade Center towers because uh, there would have been a huge rush of people coming in to work at, at the time this happened. Uh, what can you see of that emergency response at this point? Well, obviously you can hear the response now. Um, there's every kind of, every conceivably, conceivable kind of emergency vehicle is now crowded the West Side Highway and West Street fire engines, police engines, uh, ambulances. Um, everyone as of now has rushed away from the World Trade Center south, so it doesn't seem to be many people now coming down West Street. It seems it's just all the emergency vehicles going up West Street. So the response was uh, immediate. And uh, as you saw the, the or as you saw and heard the, the initial mayhem after that first plane impact. Yes, what uh, happened? It would seem to me that what would happen there is that people would rush toward the building uh, to, to aid those who were injured, and uh, then that second impact would be all the more serious because of the number of people gathered. Yes, the first impact, what the first impact did, it, it drew people out into the street and the surrounding area. In the second impact, when that happened, everyone rushed away from the building because there was showering debris everywhere. As far as where I got out, three blocks south, it was hitting the street where I was. A shoe, like, ten yards away from me, fell. All right. So that, that's how, uh, that's the, I guess, because, because of the force of the explosion. Mark, we're looking at uh, a picture. Uh, I don't know whether it's coming from, uh, from Staten Island or from the, the, the Jersey side. It uh, looks like, almost like we're, we're down on, on Staten Island with that shot. Uh, but... Uh, th there's, there's almost no face of the World Trade Center that doesn't have visible e exterior damage. Can, can you tell how big a crater that is in the side of the building, or is the smoke uh, obscuring that? No, um, actually, because the smoke is now blowing up now. When it, when it first hit, it was hard to tell. Now it seems like it, it's hard for me to judge, you know, using a floor count, like, you know, five, ten floors. It looks like there's at least ten to twenty floors of damage on the, on the uh, one impact. And I Okay, uh, uh, Mark. Uh, now there you are. Yeah, you know, I'm just getting some more information here. I, I, I thank you for your, okay. uh, your, My your comments there, and uh, I just want to pass on some additional information. Uh, we now have word uh, from law enforcement sources that both of these airplanes striking the World Trade Center were flights that came out of Boston, and uh, if, if I'm getting this information correctly, that both airplanes were hijacked out of Boston, flown to New York, and struck the side of the World Trade Center, the city now on high terrorist alert. Uh, let me run through the list of, of some of what has happened. The MTA has uh, shut down subway service or is bypassing subway service through the World Trade Center area. The lines affected there include the 1, 2, 3, 9, N, R, A, C, and E. As far as I know, subway service is still running Otherwise, clearly there will be significant delays uh, because almost every train that uh, runs through the city at some point passes through lower Manhattan. So that is going to have an impact on subway service. The Lincoln Tunnel 
is shut down. It has been sealed. The Holland Tunnel has been shut down and sealed. Uh, John Schumel told us the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel has been shut down and sealed. The FDR is shut down. Uh, the Triborough Bridge is closed, at least in, in one direction. No traffic's being allowed into Manhattan there. And at the moment, we have all three local airports shut down. Uh, again, this is my conclusion that it's on a terrorist alert, but uh, we have a lot of signs pointing to that, and it would be an appropriate precaution at this point that they shut down all three of the local airports. Uh, the pictures you're looking at here, uh, my, uh, my understanding is, is that we are looking at the southern face of the World Trade Center towers and uh, that is not where the impact occurred. The impact actually occurred on the other side of the World Trade Center towers and uh, again I'll, uh, I'll try to get uh, some tape from earlier here to give you an idea of what developed here at about 8.45 this morning, the first explosion and then we'll look at the, the tape from the second explosion happening at about 9 o'clock. Watch the right side of your screen, there's that airplane heading to the first World Trade Center tower, missing it and uh, then you see the impact to the number two World Trade Center tower and that impact came 10 or 15 minutes after the initial impact at one World Trade Center and uh, as we were just discussing uh, with uh, Mark Benoit uh, who uh, is in the area at uh, the Betsy Gottbaum campaign office there had been a tremendous response of uh, emergency vehicles and people into the area in those moments leading up to uh, that second crash because they were responding to the first crash and it, the initial reports we didn't understand what had happened it came in as a fire call at the World Trade Center so it wasn't clear uh, exactly uh, what that was or that there would be further danger and uh, we are now uh, trying to ascertain the well-being of the thousands of people who would be in the World Trade Center buildings at that time uh, of course uh, uh, Wall Street firms, uh, any number of businesses located there at the World Trade Center, the adjacent World Financial Center as well, 110 stories tall, about 40,000 people work in the World Trade Center, uh, but uh, the PATH trains move through the World Trade Center, 150,000 people pass through the World Trade Center on a daily basis. Uh, President Bush has uh, advised reporters at the White House that he will be making a comment on this. Uh, Mayor Giuliani has scheduled a press conference and uh, as we said New York City on terrorist alert at this point with uh, many precautions at uh, airports, bridges, tunnels. Uh, there is a, a situation developing that uh, the NYPD and FBI will be looking into but the more immediate concern right now is uh, the uh, fire and ambulance response to the World Trade Center. Uh, we have uh, on the telephone uh, Gabe Sumner, who's uh, been uh, watching some of this unfold as well. Gabe, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. Please share with me uh, what you've seen this morning. Well, in the first instance, I was out running, as one of your previous callers was, at, uh, at 8.45 this morning. And I was at, the, at that point at the marina in Battery Park City, which is virtually uh, in the shadow of the World Trade Center. And I heard clearly what was a sound barrier being broken sound. Uh, the whoosh of the jet and then the explosion, which I thought was a sound barrier being broken. And when I looked up, I saw the first uh, hit on the World Trade Center. But I saw no plane falling into the street, as I would have thought would have happened uh, if it were a plane, and I thought perhaps it was a missile. Uh, and we all gathered and watched what was happening, and then I came up to my apartment in Battery Park City, which overlooks the harbor, and I was watching your channel, listening to you, Pat, when what appeared to be directly over my building there was a tremendous jet sound of a, of a low-flying jet plane, and then a quarter of a second later, the second explosion at the uh, World Trade Center. Yeah, let, me, let me have you pause for a moment, because uh, I, I want to repeat here, I'm getting more information on this. Uh, out of Logan Airport in Boston, through law enforcement sources, uh, New York One understands that uh, two planes were hijacked. One was an American Airlines plane. One was a United Airlines plane. 
Uh, you know, I've seen that President Bush is uh, making some comments as well. If we can try to get that up on one of our satellite feeds, uh, I'd like to go to President Bush and listen in if we can. Uh, Gabe, uh, would, would the size of that airplane, would that be consistent with it being a commercial jetliner from what you saw? Gabe, are you still there? Hello? G G yeah, Gabe, let me ask you again. Uh, uh, we understand that it was two commercial planes hijacked out of... Uh, Logan Airport in Boston. Is, is the size of that plane, a commercial plane, consistent with what you're hearing? No, it sounded to me like a smaller plane. I think if it were a low-flying commercial jet, uh, okay. it would have been much, much louder than it was. Uh, all right, Gabe, let me interrupt you. President Bush making comments about this now. We'll listen into that live. Our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, in America. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I apologize for getting to that uh, late, and we didn't hear the beginning of President Bush's comments. Uh, I'll, I'll see if uh, someone who was, uh, was hearing them come in on the satellite feed can, can summarize for us if we, we learned any information from the President. Let me recap for you. You are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center. Approximately 8.45 this morning, the first of two plane crashes into the side of the World Trade Center. Uh, all signs at this point uh, indicating that uh, both crashes were deliberate. Uh, after uh, reports through law enforcement, law enforcement sources uh, that uh, these planes were hijacked from Logan Airport in Boston, one an American Airlines plane, one a United Airlines plane. Uh, the first crash occurring about 8.45 this morning at the building you see on the left side of this live picture. You're looking from the south uh, toward the north and uh, the tower on the left is One World Trade Center. It's the one with the television tower on top. It's where the windows on the World Restaurant is. That first plane crash at about 8.45 uh, struck the north face of the World Trade Center and uh, you can see there's damage on at least three faces of that tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, again, just by my estimate, uh, somewhere between 90 and 100 stories up the side of the uh, 110 story tall World Trade Center. It was approximately 15 minutes later, about 9 o'clock Eastern Time, as uh, we were uh, getting the first pictures uh, of the smoke coming from the World Trade Center that we saw the second plane crash and uh, I actually didn't see it until one of our viewers brought it to our attention but uh, as you look at the live shot that we were showing at the time of that crash you can actually see the second plane coming in uh, from the west and uh, flying past one World Trade Center and striking to World Trade Center and that's the situation we're left with now is that we have a fully involved fire on both of those World Trade Center structures. Uh, if indeed, uh, as those law enforcement sources are telling us, these were hijacked airplanes, uh, we can assume that there may have been uh, passengers and crew on those airplanes and uh, there would have been if not a full complement of staff in the World Trade Center towers at 8.45 on a Tuesday morning, there definitely would have been uh, a significant number of people on all of those floors uh, at this point trying to escape the World Trade Center. Uh, we don't know if elevators uh, were working, if they've been uh, going downstairs, evacuating. We've got people moving into the area. And New York One's John Shumo is uh, among them. He's at a, a vantage point not far away. John? Good morning. Once you get back, uh, the, the site that I just saw after leaving this building and trying to work my way closer to the World Trade Center uh, is most difficult to put into words. Uh, not 200 feet up the block here. Again, I'm down on the West Street, about uh, two or three blocks south of the World Trade Center. Uh, there is a tire from one of the planes. Uh, it is about six to seven feet. It is a large tire, and it is on its side. Uh, it is ripped apart. There was a crowd of people who were standing by the tower. Uh, also, there was, sadly to say, uh, several shoes which were just sitting there uh, on the street. Shoes, uh, I will assume uh, much confidently that they came from people who may have been on the plane. Uh, but again, uh, the tire is just sitting here in the middle of West Street. Uh, several shoes on the sidewalk as well. I managed to make my way back here to my uh, location on West Street uh, when all of a sudden several hundred people started running uh, south 
towards Battery Park. The police have completely cordoned off this area. As you can imagine, I've watched uh, several emergency service units from uh, far away as Brooklyn coming through this tunnel and racing up to the scene. We've seen ambulance corps, volunteer ambulance corps from, uh, from as far out as Crown Heights and, and Bedford-Stuyvesant. Uh, we've seen, obviously, a swarms of police officers uh, from precincts as far away as Staten Island making their way here. Uh, it is uh, very dramatic, as you can imagine, as your pictures tell. Pat? John, have you actually seen that, that airplane wheel yourself? I cannot see the actual plane. Um, we, again, we're on West Street, a bit south of the World Trade Center. You can obviously uh, see from, from every direction the damage actually done to the Trade Center, to both buildings, uh, in fact, as your video, I'm sure, shows. Uh, it, it, it's hard to put into words from this vantage point, but I would say several dozen floors are completely uh, blown away. The windows are gone. The flames are still going. Um, from this vantage point, though, the impact was so dramatic, you could obviously tell that these, these, these uh, tires uh, flew several blocks, uh, safe to say, uh, close to, to five, six hundred feet away from the impact. Um, and again, people right now are, are scrambling to make their way south to Battery Park City. Uh, I'm listening to your report, Pat. Obviously, now that there's an FBI investigation, uh, authorities down here are still on extremely high alert, the highest alert possible, and uh, people are taking no precautions. They're actually running, some running, some moving very quickly down south to a safe vantage point in Battery Park City. John, President Bush, uh, we, we heard the tail end of his comments, and I, I've now got a summary of what he said. Stay with me, John, uh, while I recap this. Uh, President Bush, uh, describing this as an apparent terrorist attack on our country, uh, says a full-scale investigation is underway and says the U.S. vows to track down whomever is responsible for the crashes. Uh, he said terrorism against our country will not stand. That from President Bush about 10 minutes ago. Uh, we've got New York One's John Schumo on the phone uh, from the area of the World Trade Center, and you're looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center towers after these uh, two aircraft uh, crashing into each other at the World Trade Center in rapid succession uh, at about 8.45 this morning, the second crashing at uh, about 9 o'clock this morning. Again, uh, there is now a terrorist alert in the city all three of the local airports have been shut down. The FDR shut down. Lincoln, Holland, and Brooklyn battery tunnels uh, sealed at both ends. Uh, and I, I do not know the status of, uh, of the uh, Midtown tunnel, if uh, they have done that as well there. The FDR is shut down. The Triborough Bridge has been restricted as far as traffic coming into the city. And uh, the PATH train service, which terminates in the World Trade Center, has been shut down for the moment as well. Subway service is running, but obviously severely affected by this because so many trains pass through the area of Lower Manhattan and the World Trade Center. The 1, 2, 3, 9, N, R, A, C, and E trains are all bypassing the World Trade Center. And uh, frankly, with what's going on there, uh, the, you wouldn't want to stop at the World Trade Center right now anyway. They have moved a, a massive amount of emergency equipment into the area. And uh, now, in addition to getting people out of the World Trade Center, treating the people who are injured, uh, they also face the task of fighting this fire. A uh, high-rise fire of this magnitude is, is extremely difficult to fight, particularly if it's fueled by all of that jet fuel that would have been on board these planes as they crashed into the World Trade Center. And uh, they can shut down uh, gas lines, they can shut down electrical lines, and so forth. These buildings are meant to be non-combustible, but when you do something like that, when uh, uh, an aircraft with that jet fuel crashes into the side of the building, that introduces a variable that was never accounted for in the design of these, air, uh, these, uh, these buildings. And uh, that will be the focus uh, for the fire department as they try to move equipment up there. But uh, an extremely difficult fire to fight. And uh, uh, you have to ask the question now about uh, structural damage to the World Trade Center towers and uh, whether... Uh, we will, uh, we will see those towers occupied uh, any time in, uh, in the years to come. Uh, 1945, when a twin-engine bomber crashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building, that was in dense fog. That was an accident. Uh, clearly, they repaired the damage at the Empire State Building, and uh, the uh, building has uh, not been entirely without incident, but the Empire State Building uh, has uh, withstood that plane crash. Uh, I have... Uh, the statement from uh, President Bush in front of me now, it was a, a brief statement that he made this morning after learning of the terrorist attack, or what he's calling an apparent terrorist attack at the World Trade Center. He said, today we have a national tragedy. 
two airplanes crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack. He said, I have spoken to the Vice President, the Governor of New York, the Director of the FBI, and I have ordered the full resources of the federal government to conduct a full-scale investigation into what happened and find those folks who committed this act, terrorism against our nation, will not stand. And the President followed that with a request for a moment of silence. Uh, as I said earlier, Mayor Giuliani has a, a press conference scheduled as well, and uh, we will continue to follow all of these developments as we uh, move our equipment as close to the scene as possible in order to bring you coverage of this. New York One producer Melissa Rabinovich is on the phone now. Melissa, uh, please tell me uh, where you were at the time this happened and what you're seeing now. Hi, Pat. I actually live on Fulton and Gold Street, which is, I would say is about four blocks away from the World Trade Center. I was sleeping at the time when the first, uh, when the first incident happened. The whole building shook. I was, didn't know what was going on, if it was a dream or something, and a big picture behind our bed kind of uh, shook a little bit. And then I waited about 30 seconds, and when I stood up, there were people, hundreds, running away from the World Trade Center towards the South Street Seaport. And then I went out on my balcony where I can have full view of, I'm by the South Street Seaport. Now, above me is uh, huge clouds of black smoke. We could see debris coming this way. And then when the second one happened, I was on the balcony. Again, the whole house shook, and you can see that red ball of smoke come this far. I mean, right now, at this time, uh, there are still a lot of people coming this way towards the South Street Seaport, a lot of them walking very fast. There are three pay phones in my view across the street from me on Fulton Street where I would say at least 20 people are online trying to make phone calls, trying to figure out where they're going to go. Um, I also live across from the hospital, so of course, silence every few seconds. And um, it just seems pretty scary over here. Stay with me for a moment. Uh, CNN now reporting that there is a report of a fire at the Pentagon, and I have no information than that, uh, but... Uh, Clearly, we'll, uh, we'll look to see if there could be any sort of a link. Again, that's a CNN report of a fire at the Pentagon. Uh, Melissa, what, what, what are you seeing at, at, at this point as you, as you look out in that area? What sort of activity can you see? Right now, I would say there are at least a few hundred people on the street. They're just all over. They're on the sidewalk. They're on the street. They're walking different ways. I live in a residential area. Across from me, all buildings are full with people. Many of them have cameras. Other of them are just standing there gathering. One terrace across from me has at least 20 people, many of them in suits. Um, on the ground, they're just crowds of people. There's actually a big crowd, a circle of people, about 50, in the middle of the street on the corner of Fulton and Gold. But they're all, obviously, away from the World Trade Center. Uh, Melissa, as we, uh, we uh, look back to February 26, 1993, the World Trade Center bombing, uh, an explosion confined uh, in, in the lower levels, in the, the parking areas, and uh, uh, the 200-foot uh, wide crater took some time to repair, but that was a, a relatively uh, unpopulated area of the, the World Trade Center, and uh, we still saw scores of people streaming out of the World Trade Center with, uh, with cuts and, and other injuries. Uh, it, uh, it has to be a chaotic scene at the, the World Trade Center uh, this morning after, after this happening. Uh, are, are, is, it, is it clear to you whether they've, they've set up some sort of a perimeter? Are they allowing people into the area? Uh, right now, there are no cars coming through here. When the second one happened, there were still cars, and actually about four of them came to a halt. They didn't hit each other. And then some people, uh, some NYPD people wearing, you know, blue jackets came over and seemed to scatter everybody. Right now, there are no cars passing in front of me on Fulton and Gold, and just people are all over the streets. Uh, uh, Melissa, I'm uh, just getting more information from CNN on this, uh, uh, this fire at the Pentagon. They have now uh, evacuated the Pentagon, so that is going on as, as well, and we're looking into uh, this to uh, determine uh, exactly whether there is a link to this terrorist alert, and now CNN reporting that the White House has been evacuated as well. Uh, so uh, the terrorist alert spreading from New York uh, to Washington as well. President Bush made a comment about this uh, approximately 15 minutes ago, and uh, we want to listen in now. Uh, 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 excuse me, just before we get to the president. Uh, Associated Press now reporting an aircraft has crashed into the Pentagon. Uh, so now this is the third apparently deliberate air crash, uh, the first two into the towers of the World Trade Center, the third crashing into the Pentagon, and uh, the White House is being evacuated now. If uh, I, I'm seeing pictures uh, 
of the smoke from the Pentagon on CNN, and I don't know if we can uh, uh, bring those pictures up, but uh, for the moment we'll uh, focus on, all right, uh, let's, let's take a look at this picture from Washington now. Uh, this is the scene uh, from Washington looking toward the Pentagon, the, the smoke there, so this scene that's been playing out in New York, now playing out at the Pentagon as well, and uh, we'll get more information on that as soon as it becomes available. Again, the, the White House uh, has been evacuated now, and there's a report of a fire on the Washington Mall, according to CNN, as uh, we continue to look into the impact in Washington. Back to New York now, live pictures of the World Trade Center towers. We're at 8.45 this morning. The first of two aircraft crashed into the Trade Center Towers. Uh, we have been reporting for about the past 30 minutes through a law enforcement source that two airplanes were hijacked at Boston's Logan Airport, and it is believed that those are the airplanes that crashed into the World Trade Center Towers. Our information said that one was a United airplane and one was an American Airlines plane. Another U.S. official telling the Associated Press that uh, there was a transmission from one of these airplanes indicating that they had been hijacked. And uh, that was the first word that authorities received that uh, there was something wrong. But uh, clearly from what we've heard so far, uh, no indication of what was about to happen. The uh, exterior of the, uh, the uh, World Trade Center is uh, a, a combination of uh, concrete and structural steel, uh, but uh, an airplane moving at full speed, uh, as you see here from these pictures, would puncture that structural steel, and the explosion that followed uh, started a fire that continues to burn at the World Trade Center. Oh, we have uh, the, the shot that we took at about 9 o'clock this morning, and uh, uh, I know we've got a lot of things going on in the control room, but if we can get that videotape again, it's from the opposite angle from what you're looking at right now with these live pictures. Watch the right side of your screen. You see that airplane moving toward the World Trade Center, and you'll see the impact there of that second explosion. And uh, maybe we can look at that just, uh, just once more. We'll go back to live pictures for a moment and see if we can set that, that shot up again. But uh, when you see that that videotape, uh, it, it's quite chilling to watch the deliberate path of that airplane as it's headed toward uh, the number two World Trade Center tower. And uh, from that distance, it's difficult to get an assessment of how big an airplane it is. And that's some of the information that we expect uh, will be coming out. Can we look at that tape once more? This is the uh, videotape again. There's the aircraft on the right side, passing one World Trade Center and striking number two World Trade Center. Uh, back to Washington and uh, the third of these uh, apparently deliberate aircraft crashes there at the Pentagon uh, approximately 15 minutes ago is when we received the first reports of this uh, evacuation at the Pentagon and uh, now from the Associated Press on that uh, that uh, this was a large airliner crashing into the Pentagon and uh, there is a fire now at the Pentagon, smoke billowing. An Associated Press reporter uh, says that uh, he was able to see just the, the tail end of this plane as it was crashing into the Pentagon. Uh, I, I tried a moment ago to uh, play back that statement from President Bush uh, from earlier this morning, and if we can get that, we'll let you hear what President Bush had to say. These comments from President Bush came uh, 20 or 25 minutes ago. That was before this situation developed in Washington. Uh, at that point, he was unaware that there was a problem at the Pentagon, uh, unaware of these evacuations at the White House, and uh, the president at that point thought we were dealing with a twin terrorist attack in New York, but not uh, this situation in Washington as well. President Bush's statement from uh, approximately 25 minutes ago. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. President Bush speaking about 25 minutes ago in response to this apparent terrorist attack at the World Trade Center. 
And uh, at that time, the president was unaware that there was a terrorist attack about to occur in Washington, a large jet liner seen crashing into the Pentagon, and uh, there is a huge fire at the Pentagon as well. Sources in Washington saying that they have received a threat against the White House, and as a result of that, the White House has been evacuated, the Capitol building has been evacuated. Back home now, this is uh, another angle of this uh, destruction at the World Trade Center, looking from ground level up toward the World Trade Center towers now. And uh, we should recap for you uh, what's been happening here in terms of... Uh, uh, now we've got a report from the Associated Press that uh, the FAA has, uh, has canceled all airline service nationwide. Uh, from the Associated Press, the FAA has closed down all flights nationwide as they try to determine uh, this target of uh, apparent terrorist activity and uh, these hijackings of commercial airplanes. So it is not only just the three New York City airports, but uh, commercial aviation service across the country and all aircraft takeoffs have been suspended by the Federal Aviation Administration. Uh, that an unprecedented step taken by the FAA just a moment ago in the wake of this uh, apparent uh, deliberate and concerted effort uh, to crash these airplanes into these buildings in New York and Washington. Uh, a recap of what's going on in terms of uh, transportation around the city. There has been a terrorist alert at the uh, tunnels and bridges as well. The Lincoln Tunnel, the Holland Tunnel, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel all shut down. The PATH train terminates in the World Trade Center and uh, that has been uh, shut down as well. And uh, there are to be uh, additional comments from the White House, uh, from the President, and uh, we'll get an update from the Federal Aviation Administration on what's happening uh, with this uh, complete cancellation of aircraft takeoffs throughout the country. Uh, there will be many airplanes in the air right now. They will allow those to land, but the Federal Aviation Administration, until there can be an assessment of what's going on as the security alert increases, uh, there will be uh, no more aircraft takeoffs anywhere in the country. Uh, one of the live pictures you're looking at of the World Trade Center now, the first explosion about 8.45 this morning, uh, approximately 100 stories up the side of the 110-story World Trade Center tower. One World Trade Center, uh, the tower that uh, has the television antenna on top, that was the first one struck. The second explosion came about 15 minutes later on uh, the second of the World Trade Center towers. And then we received word of a third explosion at the Pentagon in Washington. And we saw live pictures from Washington a moment ago with uh, an idea of the size of that explosion. And uh, we are uh, looking at, uh, at that as well. Uh, I'm uh, also uh, getting information that uh, they have evacuated the White House. And uh, Air Force One is actually uh, moving, according to our colleagues at, uh, at CNN, there are some uh, precautionary measures there. Uh, CNN reporting that a plane hit the Pentagon uh, about 20 minutes ago. Kristen Shaughnessy is on the phone uh, from the area of the World Trade Center. Kristen? Pat, I am at uh, Church Street, and I'll just tell you, we just drove over from Brooklyn. Quite a scene. A lot of people gathered on the streets, numerous uh, emergency vehicles, obviously too many to count. We have FBI on the street, state police, local police, all sorts of law enforcement. And what they're trying to do in this area, which is a, a couple blocks from the World Trade, but I can see the smoke still billowing from where we are, and they're trying to clear this area. A lot of people coming down here to look to figure out what is going on, and they're telling people to get away, that it's still a very dangerous situation, and that they have to leave the area. It's amazing to me how many people are actually trying to get into this area. The police are asking everyone to stay clear of this area, so that's probably the most important thing to know. I should tell you that some of the streets are eerily calm as we drove through them. Uh, we went over the Brooklyn Bridge and it was shut down, so we were literally the only ones on the Brooklyn Bridge, and uh, and then when you come over here, then there's you know, it's a very chaotic scene, but it seems like it is very well under control in terms of police and FBI. So that's, that's what's happening here, and I'll, I'll give you any answers to questions that you might have. Kristen, I have a few questions. I don't know how uh, up to speed on, your, on, on what's happening elsewhere, but there has been a report of another plane crash in Washington, uh, a third plane, a jetliner crashing in uh, to the Pentagon there. 
so uh, the the concern that this is a, a concerted pattern of terrorist attacks is is being raised here. Not only have they shut down uh, LaGuardia and Kennedy and Newark, but they've shut down aircraft takeoffs at every airport in the country. What evidence are you seeing there, Kristen, of? Uh, uh, of precautions as far as uh, preventing any sort of additional terrorist activity, if indeed that's planned. They have so many law enforcement officials out on the street right now. I'm literally uh, looking up right at the uh, the burning buildings right here, and what they're telling people is just to get away from this area because it is still just a volatile situation. It seems like they, uh, you know, I have to talk to a couple bit more law enforcement officials, but they're saying that. Uh, you know, they just don't know what's going to happen next, obviously, because that first building went into, uh, first plane went into Tower 1, and then the second plane went into Tower 2, and obviously they're on heightened alert for anything that may happen. We're told that the mayor will speak to us, uh, you know, at some point in the future once he gets briefed, obviously, and that will happen right around here. I don't know if we'll be able to bring you that live because uh, it's very hard to get, you know, live trucks here and whatnot. Also should tell you that transmission of phones is out. Um, I've been trying to reach you, actually, for about 45 minutes now, ever since we heard of this happening, and it's just very difficult to get through because the transmitters have been hit, and that's uh, what law enforcement people are telling, uh, you know, the people on the streets as well. We did uh, speak to some people who were on the streets. A lot of people are walking through the streets. They're crying, very emotional. Other people are not, but the ones who were in that nearby vicinity told us that they were told to go down into the basement just in case, and then they were ushered out of the building and told to get away as quickly as possible. Kristen, do you have an idea how quickly that happened? Because uh, as I was speaking with one of the eyewitnesses earlier, the frightening thing about this was that uh, there would have been a sense for about 10 minutes between 8.50 and 9 o'clock, roughly, that the, the immediate danger had passed, that uh, the, the emphasis would have been on bringing help into the area rather than getting people out of the area. Do, do you have a sense of, of, of how that played out in those few minutes? You know, it was, uh, I think they just assumed that this was the one plane, and I think when the realization happened that, yes, this was a plane, and it seemed, appeared to go directly into the building without trying to avert the World Trade Center, then they realized that there may be something else, and it seemed like within moments that second plane hit, so, you know, I think a lot of had been dispatched, and then when we were coming over the bridge, uh, a number of personnel from, emergency personnel from Brooklyn were dispatched, I think. Maybe then they said, okay, let's bring in, in more. So obviously you're getting people from all over the different boroughs, too. Kristen, uh, at, at, at this point, uh, how close are you able to get to the World Trade Center towers themselves? You know, Pat, I'm not actually maybe two blocks away, believe it or not. Um, but that's it. They're just trying to get everybody else out of this area. They are allowing some press and uh, obviously law enforcement officials. But... It is, when, as I'm looking up, I'm just watching the building burn right from where I am, and it's an incredible sight. It looks like probably eight floors, maybe seven, six, six to eight floors are burning, and just, uh, you know, the, the smoke continues, and on the, I'm not sure which tower I'm looking at, but the one tower is more severely burned than the other right now. Yeah, the, uh, the, the tower with the TV antenna on top of it is One World Trade Center. That's the one where the initial impact occurred. Right. And then the one with the observation deck on it is Two World Trade Center, and that's where the second explosion occurred can, uh, about 15 minutes later. I can still see flames shooting out of, of bolts, so it's an incredible sight. Do you have, uh, obviously they've told the planes to come down, so do you have any shots right now of it? Uh, you know, I've uh, we, we've got a shot looking up from the ground at the uh, at the side of the, the tower there, but uh, we we we're not looking at uh, at the actual crater on the side, but we can certainly see the uh, the smoke coming from the building. It, have you had a, a sense over the past hour? Because from what I'm seeing, there's as much smoke as there was uh, an hour ago that they have not made much much of a, a dent in this fire. I don't even know how much fire equipment they've been able to move up onto those. Oh, upper floors. it's just coming down, Pat. It is just coming down. Watch the right it's exploding. It's ripping apart. It is billowing. Pat, the debris is flying. I'm going to run. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, our, uh, we, uh, we hope that, uh, that, that Kristen was, uh, was not in a position where she would have been uh, injured by that, but the, the tower is literally uh, crumbling into the, the streets of Manhattan there. And uh, blocks and blocks. I, I, I don't know uh, don't know how much uh, debris is falling or where that debris has has fallen and uh, 
We'll attempt to re reestablish our contact with Kristen, but that, that tower is not there anymore. Uh, a, a dramatic scene, and uh, this uh, this is uh, going to uh, clearly mean that that there are hundreds, if not uh, thousands, of people injured as that that building has fallen. Uh, New York One Sharon Diesenhaus is uh, with me as well now as uh, as we watch this this uh, dramatic silence. videotape. This is uh. just extraordinary. We have just seen that was one World Trade Center. Uh, yeah, I, I, at this point I don't even know which. Uh, one which, of the World tower Trade was, Center which, towers. It, it's, uh, that was that was two World Trade Center. That was the World second. Trade Center. Uh, the Li second impact was, but it 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 has vanished uh, from in front of us. Humbling. Uh, it's now 10 o'clock, that means it was roughly an hour after the initial impact, which seemed to impact roughly the top, I would say, one-fourth of the building. And now we see the building has apparently crumbled. Uh, one wonders if there was anything on the plane that could have caused such a structural damage below, since it hit such a, the, you know, the upper portions of the, of the building. Uh, I'll ask our control room crew to try to get whatever videotape we can of, uh, of that scene as we were on the phone with, uh, with Kristen Shaughnessy. And uh, uh, please let me know if, uh, if we've reestablished contact with, with Kristen as well. Uh, she saw the uh, uh, explosion in, in front of her in, in fairly close proximity as that happened. Uh, these are several different live pictures we're looking at of the aftermath uh, to World Trade Center at this point still standing uh, you're just looking at daylight passing through the area where one world trade center stood uh, only five minutes ago and i don't know how much of that building uh... is is still standing because there is so much smoke and debris now billowing okay. out uh, across the harbor all of, over all of lower manhattan i mean it must be i would say a fifteen block wide area and probably 10 or 15 blocks high that seems to be covered now by a sort of eerie white smoke as opposed to the black smoke that was billowing out earlier from the top of the tower. Now we talked to several people who were uh, in that area of, of lower Manhattan as, uh, as this was happening and a, a lot of them had this sense of security as well that uh, this damage was a uh, hundred stories up and, and now we've had this structural failure of two World Trade Center and, and literally saw the building disintegrate and uh, much of that is smoke but uh, much of it is just dust and debris uh, as though uh, they had uh, you know it's, it's a scene that you see when they deliberately demolish a building uh, but uh, without right. any of the precautions or, or evacuations and uh, those who know that area well uh, know that there is uh, a building on every block there, uh, multi-story buildings on every block. So uh, there would undoubtedly be damage to those buildings as well, the subway lines below, the city's infrastructure below. Uh, let's look at that videotape. Uh, this would have been at about 9.55 this morning as two World Trade Center uh, started to uh, rip apart and You can just explosion. see the black smoke slowly descending through the building as it just destroys with a widening, ever widening cloud of debris in a very, very large area. And you can't look at this without a sinking feeling in your heart and wondering how many people are affected by this right now. And uh, you know, it really is a question of, of how many people were injured and killed by this now. The fire department had called in uh, every off-duty firefighter and uh, many of them would have been uh, in that area having responded to this and uh, now their thoughts have to turn to the structure of one world trade center because the fire continues to burn there uh, let's take you back to 8:45 this morning uh, we received a report of a fire at the world trade center and that can be anything from a, a, a cigarette in a trash can to uh, an electrical transformer. And, it, and we hear these very often and we always investigate them but so often they are not disasters. By itself it's not uh, an unusual call but within about five minutes uh, when we got our first pictures of the smoke uh, it, it was clear that something very serious was going on but uh, the magnitude of it uh, has escalated in the past 15 minutes uh, with the collapse of one World Trade Center and uh, that debris that has uh, spread throughout 
lower Manhattan. The, the, the question that they have to be facing there now is, is how to deal with this because now they have uh, injuries and structural damage uh, not only on the two World Trade Center towers, but for a huge area, area uh, throughout Lower Manhattan, they, uh, the stock exchange down there, and uh, and so forth, and, uh, and that has to be the And of course, the personnel who were sent in to assist those who were in danger are now very much in danger themselves. Uh, even on, on my way down uh, this morning at about nine o'clock, there were ambulances streaming down uh, 10th Avenue and 42nd Street as people. Uh, clearly, I remember from uh, February 26, 1993, all over the city, all of the fire and police personnel were called to, to assist. And, and when I saw 10th, or 9th Avenue, rather, just filled with emergency vehicles streaming down, I knew that it was uh, certainly an incident of some magnitude. I um, didn't realize that, of course, what, what was to await all of us. Uh, we've taken some action, uh, obviously, to, to move our crews uh, uh, into as, as safe a position as, as possible. Uh, and some of them, like uh, so many other people, had, had rushed down to the area of the World Trade Center, though were held back a, at a, a certain distance because of the, the police and fire perimeters that had been set up there. But uh, that collapse of uh, the uh, number two World Trade Center tower uh, caught everybody. Uh, by surprise and happened so suddenly there on that videotape and uh, we'll, we'll try to get another look at that because this is the aftermath and it, it almost looks as though there's a, a fresh wave of black smoke. There's the explosion and the collapse of uh, the tower looking from the north now. And we have some very good news for those of you who were listening just a few minutes ago. As we saw this, uh, the, the building collapsing. Uh, we also were speaking with Kristen Shaughnessy on the phone who was in close proximity and we have just gotten word that she is safe and we are all very happy to hear that. Uh, indeed, uh, CNN reporting at this point that uh, there have people have uh, been seen jumping from windows of the World Trade Center Tower uh, trying to get to safety there and uh, this is uh, that picture again from uh, about 9.55 this morning of the structural failure, the collapse of two World Trade Center uh, after this plane crash. And we know that a lot of people who are watching right now have a lot have those that they care about in, in, in this area of Manhattan. And as soon as we have any information on um, those injured, we will of course bring it to you. We simply do not have that information at this point because it is such a large scale problem. Uh, the information is not forthcoming. I think the police and fire department are scrambling just as much as the news organizations are to get uh, information. Another live picture for you here, and if somebody can tell me where this camera is, uh, it looks like we're, we're somehow looking uh, uh, across some distance, but this gives you an idea of, uh, I'm sorry, this is Washington now, this is the Pentagon. Uh, th there's a lot going on here, and, and this is the third of these apparent terrorist attacks uh, in Washington with a plane crashing into the Pentagon. Now looking once again at live pictures of the World Trade Center towers. Only one of the towers is still intact, 110 stories tall, the towers of the World Trade Center. And uh, one of them uh, literally crumbled at about 9.55 this morning. Just to give a little update on some of the effects now of what has happened thus far this morning. Uh, they are rather widespread. Air travel has been shut down at every airport across the country by the FAA. Tunnels and roads into and out of Manhattan have been shut down. Trading at the New York Stock Exchange has been suspended and was quite early on. Uh, the Pentagon, Capitol Building, White House, State Department, and Treasury have all been evacuated as well. The President and First Lady have canceled the events that they had scheduled for the day. Now, fortunately, the President was in Sarasota when this happened at the Pentagon, and uh, I understand the Governor was in Manhattan, but we do not have word of where he was, but we do have word that he is safe. Uh, other information about uh, the impact of this and the precautions that are being taken here. Uh, major terrorist attacks have resulted in the FAA uh, and that decision to shut down takeoffs at every airport across the country. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange, trading has been suspended there. They have evacuated the Stock Exchange and uh, tunnels and roads uh, in and out of Manhattan have been uh, shut down. So they have, uh, for a large part, uh, locked down uh, transit uh, and, uh, and traffic in and out of uh, 
of, of the city now. And uh, we back to the live pictures here. The remaining World Trade Center tower, one World Trade Center, the scene of that initial plane crash at about 8.45 this morning. The second plane crash uh, into two World Trade Center at about 9 o'clock this morning. And we actually saw that one happen. Pat, I'm going to interrupt you for just a moment. I understand that we have Andrew Siff now on the telephone, and he is close to the scene, but I trust safe. Andrew? Yes, uh, we're okay. We were headed south right towards the World Trade Center, and just north of Chambers Street, we actually saw a huge portion of that second tower go down, uh, at which point tens of thousands of people started running north along the West Side Highway and the Esplanade, where people are usually biking and jogging, and there's definitely an evacuation in progress now with everyone headed north. Frightening sight to behold. Andrew, what's your location? And, and just confirm for me that you're at a safe distance, please. We're at North Moore Street and the West Side Highway. We're about a block north of Chambers Street, which is no one's allowed uh, anywhere south of Chambers Street. We were headed towards the World Trade Center because it appeared as though at least it, it were to the rescue portion of what was going on and that the immediate threat might be over. That was obviously not the case. And now uh, journalists and uh, residents alike uh, have to stay back. Uh, and Andrew, as we're speaking to you, uh, I want to ask our crew to uh, get that videotape again of the collapse of uh, the, the south tower of the World Trade Center at about 9.55 this morning. And, and uh, as we're looking at that, Andrew, if, if you can tell me uh, what sort of debris is there now? Can you see the debris from the tower and the dust? From where we are now, you can't even see the second tower. It looks like right now that the World Trade Center is only one building. That's the way it appears from about 10 blocks north. You can see that the existing tower is uh, on fire for maybe the top 30 floors or so. Uh, you can see flames uh, shooting out on the west side of the tower. And behind it and to either side are just thick plumes of smoke, which almost look like huge clouds at this point. You can't even see a second tower, and you can't see debris, because if you look down the West Side Highway all the way towards the battery, nothing but smoke. Andrew, when you saw this happen, what did it look like to you at close range? Because to us, it seemed almost like uh, dominoes, you know, going floor by floor by floor. It was a little difficult at first to figure out what was happening. We heard an explosion. Uh, we heard either an explosion or the sound of something making impact. And we were in the middle, I was with uh, news assistant Jason Post, and we were walking down uh, West Street. And when we heard the sound, we whipped around and saw just a buckling of the tower. And uh, it just looked like it collapsed within itself. You could just see the top of the tower collapse. We can't tell what happened to the bottom half of the tower from here. Have you seen any people being evacuated? I know that people are fleeing, but have you seen any of the injured being evacuated from the area. I well, know there are so many who are down there to help them. What authorities did is they closed the West Side Highway to regular traffic, and it's just become virtual speedway for ambulances and emergency vehicles. And we have seen ambulances shuttling back and forth up and down the West Side Highway, indicating that there are rescue efforts in progress. We have not actually been able to get close enough to see actual victims at the scene, because obviously at this point it's still not secure. Uh, and Andrew Siff, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine the uh, extent of, of the injuries and, and deaths at the World Trade Center towers with the, the collapse of, of one of the two towers. And uh, you know, this is, is going to be a difficult story uh, to cover in terms of moving personnel into the area uh, because the, the, the fire department and the police department themselves are... Uh, having a tremendous amount of difficulty getting into the area. Andrew Siff will be checking back with you, and uh, and please, uh, as I said, keep a safe distance from uh, the tower there as we have the, uh, uh, the, uh, the fire continuing to burn at the top of One World Trade Center. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, uh, there is uh, almost no way in or out of Manhattan at this point. Uh, they have sealed the bridges and tunnels. Uh, Path train service has been shut down. Uh, as far as uh, aircraft service, not only the three New York airports shut down, but aircraft takeoffs across the country have been suspended because of these terrorist attacks on One World Trade Center, on Two World Trade Center, and on the Pentagon. That attack on the Pentagon came about 30 minutes after the first attack at the World Trade Center. Uh, New York One, through law enforcement sources, got word very early on that the plane that crashed into One World Trade Center and the plane that crashed into Two World Trade Center had both been hijacked from Logan Airport 
in Boston. Uh, New York One's Kristen Shaughnessy was on the phone with us a few moments ago as one World Trade Center literally uh, disintegrated before our eyes. Kristen, uh, I, I can't tell you how relieved I am to hear your voice. Thank you very much. It was quite a scene, Pat. Um, as I said, I was looking up at it, and right when we were talking, I saw it come down. And they literally, I have to commend the law enforcement, they got everybody, it seemed, as, as best they could where I was, out of that area. There were people who were stumbling and losing their shoes. I actually ran barefoot for about seven blocks. Uh, but they got everybody in that area. There were people who were, you know, breaking down. It was, you know, they couldn't walk that much, and they really helped them, and then they, they assisted them, and they got them to safety. So now what they're doing is they're evacuating everyone to the to either Midtown or the Upper East Side. People were lined up here at the phones, and they said, no more phone service. You really have to get out of this area because we don't know what is going to happen next. And uh, I'm not sure what the condition of those two buildings is. I did hear something, but maybe you can update me on that because you probably can see it better than I can right now. Uh, yeah, well, Kristen, we have several different live angles here, and, and, the, uh, and the frightening thing is the fact that One World Trade Center just isn't there anymore. Okay. Uh, I, that doesn't surprise me. Pat, one moment. I just want to see. There's some personnel. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Kristen, let me just correct something. It was Two World Trade Center. That, two World. That, that, that's that, that what I thought went down. Yeah. Okay. And is One World Trade, maybe you can update me on that. Well, the, the, I mean, the fire continues to burn there, yeah. and uh, you know, there, there have to be questions on the part of the, the fire department at this point about... Uh, the structural integrity of that building and and whether they want to send any people in you know, uh, be, because you know, they they try to respond to these things by sending firefighters up the stairs to fight the fire but uh, when you're talking about a, an explosion of this magnitude that amount of jet fuel up there right. uh, they would have to uh, ask themselves questions about whether they want to send those men in to fight the fire or just let it burn itself out absolutely I do see a lot of uh, law enforcement officials kind of getting people out of this area I don't know they were evacuating right along with us I had FBI agents and state police running right along with me because people were literally cuttered, covered in soot, in this gray uh, sit, soot, and you could see, like, building mass in the air. It was an incredible, incredible sight. Um, there was one woman who was just covered from head to toe. She told me she worked in the World Trade Center on the 31st floor. She had not yet arrived at work. In fact, Pat, I see two of Excuse me. Can I, can I talk to you from... Over here, up one. Uh, Kristen's going to yeah. try to... to uh, Kristen, um, have you got someone there with you? Um, I'm trying, Pat. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Uh, Kristen, take take 30 I'm seconds not. and, and uh, we'll come back to you. Okay. Just talking about the structural damage that Kristen was concerned about, I can't help wondering that as well. I remember, once again, when the World Trade Center bombing occurred in 1993, word was that approximately 50,000 people were in that building, or in the building, um, at peak time. Of course, that happened uh, just after peak time. No, that was at peak time, but it was lunch, so a number of people were out. This at 9 o'clock in the morning, 8.45 in the morning, most of the people were coming into uh, their offices. One hopes that uh, many people were late to work today. Um, I have no idea how many people would have been in the World Trade Center at the time of the explosion and how many people could have possibly been transported out. Uh, we've got uh, New York One's Andrew Kurtzman standing by. He actually saw the collapse of, uh, of one of the towers as, uh, uh, as Kristen Shaughnessy did, and John Schumo's back on the phone with us. John? Uh, Pat, uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, go ahead, John. Um, covered with shit, Pat. It could collapse right in front of my eyes as well. Uh, I was running actually towards the building uh, looking for a cameraman. As you can imagine, people were scattered everywhere. I looked up. Uh, there's another explosion as we speak. Uh, oh, I looked up and it just collapsed in front of my eyes. Uh, the worst possible vision you could ever imagine. John, John, are you in a safe position there? I, I, I don't want to continue this if uh, uh, if there's a concern about uh, where you are. Uh, no, we've, we've managed to, uh, at this point, along with thousands of other people, uh, run at top speed uh, down to Battery Park City. There was a cloud of smoke that just... Uh, enveloped all of us. We were just absolutely uh, covered. Uh, a woman fell in my feet. We picked her up. Uh, uh, all right, uh, we're we're losing John. Uh, there's obviously. Some... Uh, we're here. We're here. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's obviously, as you can imagine, a quite emotional uh, moment down here. We've actually pulled several people uh, into the live truck uh, for safety. Um, people are just absolutely covered with soot right now. Uh, the collapse was, as I think we saw on New York One, uh, just uh, miles high. The, the, the smoke just 
uh, crept down the street uh, and thousands of people running. It was uh, a scene that is really uh, unthinkable. There are right now several city buses uh, down here at Battery Park, and people have piled into these city buses. There's a construction site down here as well. Uh, there are people who have climbed into these construction sites. There are seven to eight people deep in cars just sitting here, uh, covered in soot, their faces uh, up against towels. Uh, the woman who fell to my seat, uh, we managed to get her into the New York One live truck. She had uh, what we thought was an asthma attack at the time. She's now uh, doing okay. The casualties I can only uh, imagine right now, but uh, it is a scene that the, the ash down here, the dust, uh, is probably about a good quarter of an inch high, and we, again, are down by Battery Park City. We're a good, um, probably about 20 blocks, maybe 15 blocks away from the Trade Center, uh, and uh, it's still smoking, as you can imagine. John, Pat? stay with me for just a second. Uh, Chris, uh Sharon's with me here and has some information for parents of, uh, of students who are in the schools nearby the World Trade Center. Three schools there, John, are being evacuated. Economics and Science Leadership and Public Service Murray Bergtraum and uh, Stuyvesant PS89 and PS234. Uh, sorry, PS89 and PS234 are being used for triage. Parents can come, parents should come and pick up their children at these schools. Uh, and that's assuming the parents can, can get into the area. Right. Clearly the staff at those schools will be uh, doing whatever they can to calm the students and take care of them uh, in the interim here. But uh, if, it's, if it's safe for parents, if they can get into the area of those schools and, and take their kids home, it would uh, just make things easier as far as the, the triage efforts and the emergency response. And clearly this is the first insight we've had into the system being set up. To, to attempt to deal with it, a, a disaster of this magnitude with this many injuries. And of course the city's Office of Emergency Management set up that bunker that was much talked about. Uh, the mayor uh, at some points criticized for the amount of expense on that bunker. Uh, ironically, it is right in the midst of all of this, and uh, I don't know whether it's whether it's in service or whether it's too close to all of this for them to to actually use the emergency operations center because it is yeah. part of the World Trade Center, not uh, of one of the two uh, main towers that were actually struck by this, but uh, right at the base of those towers. But even still, probably now a half an hour after the collapse of two World Trade Center. It's clear that the smoke around there is so thick, it would be very difficult for people to, to really breathe and certainly to function very well in that immediate area. It certainly seems as though any movement would be quite difficult in that area, to say nothing of the uh, difficulties in, in transmissions and power and various things because of the interruption um, in the... World Trade Center tower that has the TV antenna, World, one World Trade Center. Our colleagues at CNN now reporting that one of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center towers was an American Airlines 767, a huge commercial jetliner hijacked from Logan Airport in Boston, striking the World Trade Center after flying down uh, to New York City. And we have word the other one was uh, United. Uh, it was a United Airlines also plane from Logan. That, uh, according to our sources, uh, also hijacked from Logan. I don't know what type of airplane it was. And some of the eyewitnesses I spoke to just in the first 20 minutes after this happened it didn't sound loud enough to them to be a large jetliner. Right. But uh, this report says it was a 767, uh, the first one, and we don't know the identity of the second airplane. Uh, but uh, we do know that the FAA has responded by halting all flights across the nation. And interestingly, uh, there was word that uh, it was transmitted somehow from the plane to, I guess, air traffic controllers that it had been a hijack. And there was no word uh, on the wires prior to this that a plane had been hijacked. And uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm hesitant to, uh, to get too far into the speculation here, but I would, uh, would think it unlikely that any commercial pilot would steer his plane into the World Trade Center. He'd more likely crash the plane into the harbor even if there was a, a gun to his head. And you've got to wonder if this was organized enough that the hijackers actually had someone capable of, of flying the airplane uh, because uh, these are three clearly deliberate targets, one World Trade Center, two World Trade Center, and the attack at the, the Pentagon. Uh, this is the live picture where you saw two World Trade Center towers standing only an hour ago and just one of them remaining. And again, one of the most disconcerting things is to think about the organization that must 
have been in place, the, the infrastructure to, uh, terror, if, if in fact this is a terrorist attack, to have set up such a disaster of such magnitude? The uh, Pentagon, as we mentioned, the third uh, target of these terrorist attacks this morning. We have video from Washington of uh, the Pentagon shortly after uh, this attack on the Pentagon. The uh, Federal Aviation Administration at that point, it was clear that uh, this was to be a, uh, a threat not just on the city of New York, but on Washington as well. This is a live picture now of the fire that is burning at the Pentagon. An Associated Press reporter who was at the Pentagon, Dave Winslow, says uh, he could see the tail of a large airliner as it plowed into the Pentagon, and that fire there in Washington continues to burn. Uh, this came only a few minutes after the uh, double disaster at the World Trade Center. Uh, as we recap this, uh, there is very little movement into or uh, out of Manhattan because of uh, subway closures, path train closures, bridge and tunnel closures, and uh, this is the, the heart of the reason for that. The explosion, well, first of all the crash, then the second crash, and subsequently the structural failure and massive explosion that brought down to World Trade Center and sent debris raining down on a huge part of lower Manhattan. And Pat, I'm just hearing word that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department in Washington, according to a senior law enforcement official as well. We have no more details on that, but of course, we will bring them to you as soon as they become available. Our uh, reporters have been gathered in the area near the World Trade Center Tower. A number of uh, international flights that were in the air, uh, headed to uh, D.C. and to New York City, are now being diverted on an emergency basis to nearby airports in Canada. They don't even want to land them at uh, airports in the U.S., so Canadian airports are being used uh, in order to take uh, some of these international flights that uh, left uh, their point of origin hours ago. The crews would have heard about this uh, on their way, and now they've made adjustments to their flight path and are bringing these airplanes into Canadian airports. The uh, uh, magnitude of this story, uh, not only a New York City story, uh, not only a Washington story, but clearly a global story at this well, point. Well, of course, the whole country has no air service right now. If you just imagine in an economic sense what that does to the businesses, to have no uh, airplanes flying in, no business meetings that are out of city occurring um, you know across the whole country that's just absolutely extraordinary and an additional advisory from New York City Transit now there is no subway service in New York City all subway service throughout the five boroughs has been suspended uh, as a precaution after this terrorist attack at the World Trade Center so uh, we uh, advise you to uh, to find your family make sure that uh, everyone's safe get together and uh, and just uh, stay out of the streets at this point until we get a chance to uh, assess uh, exactly uh, what's going on here. There, There is no indication that there is, uh, is any further danger, but exactly. uh, they are, uh, and I don't want to be alarmist about that. Very uh, important. But uh, at, at this point, uh, it would be of great help to the authorities down at the World Trade Center and uh, the people working in that area uh, that uh, people just uh, stay clear and stay home if possible. Clearly, we have a, a large disaster on our hands, but um, and I think the officials simply don't want a larger disaster to, to be at risk. So that's why so many precautions have been taken. The planes are shut down nationwide by the FAA. Uh, New Jersey. Oh, two State World. There it goes. Uh, the other World Trade Center tower is collapsing. Watch your oh screen my. there. 10:28 now. The second World Trade well, Center, two World uh, Trade Center, is disintegrating. Now the second tower has collapsed. Uh, the first Sorry, collapsing. This is one World Trade Center now. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Two World Trade Center collapsed at about 9:55, and uh, now that picture it, it was difficult to tell with so much smoke. But 110 stories tall, two towers built in 1973, and. Uh, they have now both come down after this terrorist And attack. we can only imagine this, the magnitude of this force when you consider how large the bomb was in uh, 1993 that did structural damage only to really the foundation, did not shake the uh, structural integrity of the building. And we were assured after 1993 when the building was reopened that it was uh, structurally sound and uh, ready to withstand um, enormous blows. So to imagine what kind of force this must have been is daunting. 
Well, we've been discussing that, that possibility that uh, the, the fire crews would have had to consider that possibility as they were, were looking at this uh, with the uh, structural damage that, that uh, tower sustained up there. Uh, of course, there is electrical service and gas service throughout the towers, and uh, they uh, have, have both collapsed now. The uh, t antenna on top of One World Trade Center is the primary transmitter for uh, most of the New York City television stations. Uh, they do have backup transmission facilities, but uh, that is uh, a vital link to communications, uh, that antenna on top of the World Trade Center, and uh, though they likely took that out of service because of the damage, uh, clearly uh, that may create some problems for other television stations as well. Yes, uh, I was just pointing that out as well. Now, Ed um, Giuliani is uh, getting ready to, uh, to brief reporters, and if we're able to, uh, to, to get to that, we will uh, bring you the comments from Mayor Giuliani. Uh, he moved into the area uh, as this was happening, but uh, again, because of this structural failure, they had to uh, move people back uh, much farther than, uh, than they had, had first anticipated. They set up a perimeter and then immediately began to evacuate some of them. Still waiting on uh, comments from Mayor Giuliani, and we'll bring you those uh, as, as soon as he begins to, uh, to make his statements. President Bush was in Sarasota, Florida at the time this happened. He made some comments uh, initially after the attack on the World Trade Center, but before the attack on the Pentagon, and he has since uh, boarded Air Force One and is returning to Washington to address this terrorist threat. Okay, we understand now that it will be just a few more minutes before the mayor um, addresses the press. Just to recap a little bit now, uh, 8.45, the first tower was hit. That was... It's about 8.45 when we got the first report of a fire. Uh, by my recollection, approximately 8.54 when we got our first look at the, the pictures and, and saw that, uh, that there was uh, a significant fire. And then about 9 o'clock is when that second airplane struck the other World Trade Center tower. The World tower. Trade Center from the, coming from the west. Um, just a few minutes later, the president uh, said that he was considering this an apparent terrorist act and uh, precautions were taken. Airports were closed. Lincoln Battery and Holland Tunnel were closed. The PATH train was shut down. Uh, I believe the bridges were shut down at that time as well. And then shortly at thereafter, 9.55, uh, the first World Trade Center collapsed. That was two World Trade Center. And uh, then 1028, One World Trade Center collapsed. John Schum uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Sharon. Uh, John Schumo is back on the phone with us. Uh, John, this uh, tower, 110 stories tall, uh, collapsing with, with no significant notice. The, the footprint of debris from a collapse of that magnitude must be tremendous. Do you have any, uh, any understanding of that? Pat, from where I am right now, uh, we ran back to the live truck uh, the dust cloud, the second dust cloud, has completely covered our truck. I'm inside the live truck now, looking out, and I cannot see more than 10 feet past me at this point. There is a yellow taxi, which is parked right in front of us. Um, outside of that yellow taxi, I cannot see across the street. Uh, faint images of uh, emergency lights off about 20 to 30 feet in front of me. Um, we're, again, we're here in the truck with two complete strangers, as well as our New York One crew and uh, you cannot see anything. It is the heaviest of snowfall, it appears like, uh, right now. It is uh, as dramatic and uh, as heart-wrenching as you could possibly imagine. John, are you having any difficulty breathing? Is it... Is oh, absolutely, it... absolutely. Uh, you can't breathe. You, everyone has their shirts uh, either off, uh, shirts wrapped around their faces, napkins held up to their faces. Uh, at this point, it is to my... I mean, it feels to me just like ash. Uh, I'm not feeling any sort of a burning sensation uh, in my throat. I'm essentially just having a difficult time breathing, uh, as is everyone else down here. Uh, thousands and thousands of us um, are we're covered with ash right now. What, what else can I say? It's as if uh, uh, the chimney was blown right onto us. Uh, but again, no burning sensation. It doesn't seem like any sort of an acidic substance. Uh, obviously, with, with planes uh, and, the, and the jet fuel, uh, I don't smell any jet fuel from down where I am. But again, I'm several, uh, several blocks away. Uh, but right now, we're just covered uh, in our second uh, overwhelming dust cloud, uh, some debris. Uh, we
antenna on top of One World Trade Center is the primary transmitter for uh, most of the New York City television stations. Uh, they do have backup transmission facilities, but uh, that is uh, a vital link to communications, uh, that antenna on top of the World Trade Center, and uh, though they likely took that out of service because of the damage, uh, clearly uh, that may create some problems for other television stations as well. Yes, uh, I was just pointing that out as well. Now, Roger um, Giuliani is uh, getting ready to uh, to brief reporters, and if we're able to, uh, to to get to that, we will uh, bring you the comments from Mayor Giuliani. Uh, he moved into the area uh, as this was happening, but uh, ag again, because of this structural failure, they had to uh, move people back uh, much farther than uh, than they had had first anticipated. They set up a perimeter and then immediately began to evacuate some of them. Still waiting on uh, comments from Mayor Giuliani, and we'll bring you those uh, as, as soon as he begins to, uh, to make his statements. President Bush was in Sarasota, Florida at the time this happened. He made some comments uh, initially after the attack on the World Trade Center, but before the attack on the Pentagon, and he has since uh, boarded Air Force One and is returning to Washington to address this terrorist threat. Okay, we understand now that it will be just a few more minutes before the mayor um, addresses the press. Just to recap a little bit now, uh, 8.45, the first tower was hit. That was... It's about 8.45 when we got the first report of a fire. Uh, by my recollection, approximately 8.54 when we got our first look at the, the pictures and, and saw that, uh, that there was... Uh, a significant fire, and then about nine o'clock is when that second airplane struck the other World Trade Center tower. Two World tower. Trade Center from the coming from the west. Um, just a few minutes later, the president uh, said that he was considering this an apparent terrorist act, and uh, precautions were taken. Airports were closed. Lincoln Battery and Holland Tunnel were closed. The PATH train was shut down. Uh, I believe the bridges were shut down at that time as well. And then shortly uh, thereafter, 9.55, uh, the first World Trade Center collapsed. That was two World Trade Center. And uh, then 10.28, one World Trade Center collapsed. John Schum uh, I'm so sorry, Sharon. Uh, John Schumo is back on the phone with us. Uh, John, this uh, tower, 110 stories tall, uh, collapsing with, with no significant notice. The, the footprint of debris from a collapse of that magnitude must be tremendous. Do you have any, uh, any understanding of that? Pat, from where I am right now, uh, we ran back to the live truck. Uh, the dust cloud, the second dust cloud, has completely covered our truck. I'm inside the live truck now looking out, and I cannot see more than 10 feet past me at this point. There is a yellow taxi which is parked right in front of us. Um, outside of that yellow taxi, I cannot see across the street. Uh, faint images of uh, emergency lights off about 20 to 30 feet in front of me. Um, we're, again, we're here on the truck with two complete strangers as well as our New York One crew, and uh, you cannot see anything. It is the heaviest of snowfall, it appears like uh, right now. It is uh, as dramatic and uh, as heart-wrenching as you could possibly imagine. John, are you having any difficulty breathing? Is it? Oh, is absolutely, it... absolutely. Um, you can't breathe. You, everyone has their shirts uh, either off, uh, shirts wrapped around their faces, napkins held up to their faces. Uh, at this point, it is to my, I mean, it feels to me just like ash. Uh, I'm not feeling any sort of a burning sensation uh, in my throat. I'm essentially just having a difficult time breathing, uh, as is everyone else down here, uh, thousands and thousands of us. Um, are, we're covered with ash right now. What, what else can I say? It's as if uh, uh, the chimney was blown right onto us. Uh, but again, no burning sensation. It doesn't seem like any sort of an acidic substance. Uh, obviously, with, with planes uh, and, the, and the jet fuel, uh, I don't smell any jet fuel from down where I am. But again, I'm several, uh, several blocks away. Uh, but right now, we're just covered uh, in our second uh, overwhelming dust cloud, uh, some debris. Uh, we could see it from a distance when the second building went, but I don't see any debris uh, here from me. Uh, again, it is just an, an unexplainable amount of ash which has uh, covered uh, all of downtown Manhattan. John, what was your sense when the second building uh, collapsed? Did, did the ash multiply enormously, or was it just uh, difficult to tell? 
I would say the, there was more ash on the first one. Uh, maybe that's only because it was just uh, a, a stunning moment. Um, the first one appeared to me to be more overwhelming. Then again, I was running through that cloud, so uh, my obviously my, my adrenaline was perhaps a bit uh, a bit not. Uh, it's Knocked difficult out. to concentrate is what I'm trying right. to say. But now, we're looking now at a picture. Oh, no, now we're back to a live picture. Just a few moments ago, while you were describing that, we were looking at a picture of the second tower, one World Trade Center coming yeah. down. And let's look okay, at it again. Here now. we go. This is now, the 1028. Second tower, the second tower came with some warning. There was a large uh, sound uh, similar to the first tower coming down. Uh, the second tower gave way, and uh, people just stood there as if not again. Uh, the few hundred who were still lingering down um, down uh, here at Battery Park City uh, just turned and looked. We didn't think this cloud would would uh, overwhelm us as much as the other one, but sure enough, uh, it has, and we've sprinted once again to the live truck. Uh, if we have some time, uh, and do we have some time before I continue? It, it, yes. It, John, John, go ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll listen in. I want to bring in uh, Mabel Chan right now. She is a uh, producer with uh, NBC News, one of the people who uh, was running with us. She's bloodied, uh, and she ran with us to the truck, uh, and we had put her in. She was absolutely covered with ash now. Mabel, I'm going to give you the phone, and if you could tell us uh, your thoughts on this horrific day. Hi. Um, I was standing very close to Tower 2, and I was talking to a woman who saw what happened. And all of a sudden, the tower came down, and I thought it might have been triggered. I don't know. I'm speculating here. Uh, by the chopper, um, going very close to that building, it appeared that chopper was perhaps looking for bodies trapped in there. And the moments after that, I saw that chopper, the, the building started to uh, come down, and everyone was running, and so was I. And in a pandemonium, um, I fell, and people ran over me. And, uh, and I managed to pick myself up and keep running. And uh, I basically just hurt myself in the knees, elbow, uh, have uh, cut my lips and uh, my ear, uh, back of my ear is also bleeding. Uh, it's, it's an absolute nightmare. It's, it's like a war zone. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty much dead right now. Surrounding us, there's nobody around except us. We're, there are five of us right now in the New York One van. And how many people as far as you can see? Right now, nobody I can see. There's nobody uh, outside of our van uh, except the five of us who are now in this New York One van, uh, and we're just looking at each other and, and stunned. Okay, Mabel. Well, we certainly hope that you uh, are returned to safety soon and that you have a, a speedy recovery. Uh, if we could just speak with John Shumo sure. for a moment. Sharon, I can hear you. Hi. Uh, John, have you? We, we're just having no information, it seems, on the details of the rescue effort. Do you have any sense of people being transported out? People uh, from yeah, from our from our vantage point, that is uh, impossible to tell. Uh, I will say uh, again, we arrived here probably around uh, 9:30, and we saw dozens and dozens of rescue efforts, people coming in from, from Brooklyn and Staten Island, ambulances, they were all heading north, uh, obviously to the Trade Center. Uh, when this first building collapsed, at that point, this is about an hour and a half later, is my rough guess, um, most of the civilians were evacuated, but certainly, certainly not all. And um, getting out of the truck right now, as we seem to have a little bit of a reprieve from the ash, um, the rescue efforts from our vantage point were, um, were mobilized, obviously, around the Trade Center in the several block area. They were evacuating civilians south towards Battery Park. Um, I, I don't want to speculate on the NYPD and the FBI's efforts at this point uh, with, with such a loss and staring me in the face, but it seems like there were a lot of civilians uh, in a, a close proximity to this Trade Center when the first one came down. Uh, after that came down, it's, uh, it's, a, it's like a ghost land out here with the, with the dust and the soot flying around. When the second one came down, I saw nothing but uh, emergency personnel running from the scene. Fire department, uh, as well as uh, some police officers emerged, uh, just absolutely covered uh, with soot head to toe. John? John, thank you very much. We've just gotten some uh, further information, sketchy as it might be, on the attack on the State Department. Uh, this is from the AP. Senior law enforcement officials say a car bomb exploded outside the State Department. It was already among the buildings in the nation's capital evacuated due to today's attacks, fortunately. Uh, a senior official says the evacuation was 
because of a possible explosion or fire amid a rash of explosions in Washington and New York City. Sharon, word from Pittsburgh that another large plane has crashed, a plane going down in western Pennsylvania. Uh, officials at the Somerset County Airport in western Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh say another large plane has crashed there and uh, that would be consistent with these concerns that the Federal Aviation Administration had that caused them to shut down air travel at airports across the country. So it certainly seems like that was a prudent measure and not uh, overreacting. And uh, there is that uh, car bomb report. Uh, part of the Pentagon has collapsed as a result of the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. And uh, we have uh, additional information about New York City schools now. Okay, we're now looking at a picture of the Pentagon, as you can see from the sign below, Pentagon Mall and River Entrances. And uh, as you can see, it is smoldering now. Uh, the, the smoke is black, but the flames are not large. I don't know exactly what part of the Pentagon that is. Let, let me, uh, we'll leave that picture up, and I do want to give this information out to, to, to parents. Uh, uh, parents of children at PS or IS 89 should know that uh, their children have been walked to PS 41. Uh, they have made their way safely to PS 41, and parents should pick their children up there. Again, that's uh, public school 89. Uh, those students are now at PS 41, which you'll find at 116 West 11th Street. So parents should see their children there. Uh, students from PS 234 have been walked to PS 41 as well. PS 234 students have been walked safely to PS 41, again at 116 West 11th Street. And students from PS 150 are being evacuated as well. They will be found at PS 3. Public School 3 is at Christopher and Hudson. Okay. Uh, and we will continue to repeat this information so that parents can be sure to join with their children. It certainly is going to be difficult for them to get to their children because there's no subway service, but at least you know that your children have, if you are, they are in those schools, have been safely transported. The impact of this on transportation to and from New York has been uh, dramatic. Uh, planes that uh, were headed for New York City or Washington were diverted to Canada. Uh, to try to establish a safe landing in Canada. We have the tunnels closed, the subway system is shut down, uh, commuter rail, Metro North, Long Island Railroad and so forth is all shut down. Uh, New York Post's Kristen Shaughnessy back on the telephone with us uh, from the area near the World Trade Center. Kristen? Good morning again, Pat. I am actually just across from City Hall. I don't have to tell you with that second explosion, the dust did not seem as bad, but it still extended all the way over here. And I'm told that uh, they can feel that dust in Brooklyn believe it or not. Um, it's basically just, it was skirting across the ground, and you could just see people covered. Many, many people have masks over their heads, or over their mouths and their noses, and there are virtually no civilians in this area. They, uh, I have to commend the law enforcement officials. They really did an admirable job getting everyone that they could out of this area. So it seems like, uh, for now, it's, it's pretty much deserted. Where I am, I am literally the only one here. Wow, that must be so eerie. It's unbelievable because you, you hear these explosions. In fact, I just heard another one. Uh, I don't know if it was like an after effect or whatnot, just while you were on the phone talking about the school closings. And uh, it wasn't as big, obviously, as the other ones, but it was. It still sent a tremor all the way over here. And I'm obviously on the other side of it, the World Trade Center on the other side of the city. And uh, it, it's just unbelievable. And then you see people walking around. And the interesting thing is no one is screaming, really. Everyone is just walking around with this look on their face, no one's saying anything to anyone. And, you know, you do see some people who need, obviously, medical help. I had a man who uh, was begging to, to get some medical help, which they did. Um, and I hear ambulances every once in a while going through, police cars every once in a while going through. But that is, that's what it is right now. But literally, there is no one around here. And obviously, if you've ever been down by the courts here in City Hall, you know that that is... Teeming is not, with activity. Yeah. Kristen, uh, our colleagues at CNN reporting now that the Pentagon is monitoring uh, another plane uh, behaving erratically and uh, uh, attempting to determine whether that is another hijacked plane, uh, but uh, there is no information uh, as to uh, exactly uh, where in the country that airplane is, is, is located, but uh, that is uh, another situation that they are dealing with uh, as uh, federal officials in Washington track this terrorist attack. And we have this report from the Pittsburgh area that a large plane crashed there. 
approximately 20 minutes ago in the area near Pennsylvania at the uh, Somerset County Airport. And it does not indicate how many people were aboard that plane or what airline, any other information beyond that. I Pat, also... I'm hearing another explosion, just so oh. you know. I'm hearing another rumble. It's not as bad as the other ones were, but I don't know if you have pictures that we you We have can a see. picture and we don't see anything beyond the, the enormous billows okay. of smoke that have been there, but no additional what you uh, can bursts from our vantage point. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt, Sharon. No. Uh, what you can feel when these tremors come is that it literally comes up under your feet. That's what it feels like. I, uh, that's the best way I know to describe it. And, and Kristen, the, uh, uh, I mean, that area of, of lower Manhattan, while the well, the, the entire area of Manhattan is built on, on solid bedrock. Right. Uh, th there is so much infrastructure underneath the city there that uh, that has to be a concern with every one of these explosions. There are uh, every subway line in the city converging down there. The PATH train comes in there. Uh, there's the subterranean mall at the World Trade Center. Uh, it, it's uh, it's an area that would be susceptible to those sort of, of, of tremors moving through. Absolutely, and let me just tell you, I, I told you how deserted this area was, um, and all of a sudden I just saw a number of civilians who are now walking north, and it looks like they may have been in a basin or something, now they're trying to get them out. Well, it looks like it may be relatively safe, because like I said, I hadn't seen any civilians in this area, and now there are a number of people with briefcases and, and things as if they were going to work, now headed uptown. They're trying to get everyone to either Midtown or the Upper East Side. That's what they're telling people to do. Kristen, just a, a note here. We have just gotten word that all federal office buildings in Washington, D.C. are now being evacuated, again, as a precautionary measure. But as this um, apparently widens in its scope, there are more and more precautionary measures taken to prevent a larger and larger disaster from occurring. Approximately uh, 40 to 50,000 people work at the World Trade Center and this was late enough in the day that many of them would have arrived at their desks at that point. I I'd like, you, like to take you back through uh, some of the developments through the morning and the videotape that we have seen as we've gone through uh, these various developments through the morning. And uh, we will begin, uh, we'll continue to look at this live picture until we have uh, some of that videotape ready. But it was 8.45 this morning when we received uh, the first word that there was a fire at the World Trade Center. At that point, it wasn't clear to us uh, exactly what the cause of that fire was. And then as we had our live cameras trained on the World Trade Center at about 9 o'clock, uh, we saw the impact of the second airplane, which hit uh, two World Trade Centers. So the first airplane ripped that hole in one World Trade Center. The second airplane ripped the hole in two World Trade Center. And uh, as that plane was, was coming in, we were looking at it live at the time, and it was just a speck off in the distance, but we could see that aircraft coming in and uh, charting what we now know and assume to be a deliberate course into the side of the World Trade Center. Uh, it took some time after that. Uh, Sharon Dizanos had joined me here at New York One at that time, and uh, then we began to see the structural failure of these right. towers. And we were, we were discussing our concerns about... Uh, sorry, Sharon, this is... This is uh, we're we're just, just going to bring up that shot of, uh, uh, of the incident at 9 o'clock this morning. Watch the right side of your screen for the plane. There's a small black dot you can see that is the plane and it is about to have impact right there and that is two world trade center both of those buildings are no longer standing both of those buildings 1362 feet high no longer standing 50,000 people work in them each day and uh, following that we got those uh, those two structural failures of the two world trade center towers and and that uh, perhaps came as the uh, the biggest surprise is just how quickly these buildings disintegrated. This was the first one about 9.55 to World Trade Center just collapsing like a heap of dominoes leaving you with a sick feeling in your stomach wondering how many people were in there, how many people were hurt. And uh, then to about half an hour after the first structural failure uh, here's another. Uh, it, it began with an explosion near the top, near the scene of the plane crash, and the building, uh, story by story, from top to bottom, ripped apart. That transmission tower on the top of One World Trade Center, you saw it for a moment just tumbling away. And, and when you consider that uh, the World Trade Center is nearly 1,400 feet tall, or uh, more correctly was 1,400 feet tall, the, uh, the, the difficulty 
in that uh, as it as it fell was that uh, the the path of debris could have been a, a quarter of a mile in any direction. Uh, uh, we were looking at a live picture there, and we're going to try to get another uh, another angle of this as the, the, the fire continues to burn. And then, of course, as the word of the disaster in the World Trade Center was coming out at around 940, we hear word that the Pentagon has been hit as well, that another plane had landed in the Pentagon. And uh, there were reports that the, the tail part of, uh, of a plane had been seen with billowing smoke there, and uh, then the, begi the waves of precautionary measures began in Washington, D.C., evacuating the White House, evacuating the Pentagon and the State Department and eventually all of the buildings in Washington, D.C. Uh, in some ways, this is the least of our concerns now, but uh, this, of course, is primary day in New York City. We have just received word that that uh, election has been canceled or, or at least postponed, so uh, there is uh, no need to uh, go to the polls today. They are going to uh, make some sort of uh, contingency to have that primary election on another day and uh, the city will uh, turn its attention to the tragedy at the World Trade Center instead. Just in terms of trying to function today, you should know that subway service in New York City has been canceled. Of course, uh, all air service in and out of New York City across the country has been canceled until further notice uh, in the FAA, uh, by the FAA. Earlier, of course, they started out by, by canceling service at LaGuardia and JFK, but this, this has sort of widened and widened in its scope in terms of actual problems, actual devastation, and in terms of precautionary measures to contain the devastation. Is this a live picture that I'm looking at here? Okay, this is, this is tape from earlier. Oh, I guess we can see there that uh, it was at the time that uh, at least one of the World Trade Center towers uh, was still standing. And uh, we, we just, uh, from the shots that we've seen, we actually don't know if there is anything to speak of left of the two World Trade Center towers. Uh, we, we know that uh, uh, there, there's nothing that, that's uh, tall enough that it's uh, above the skyline of the rest of the buildings in lower Manhattan there. And you can see uh, that, uh, that smoke that is, is uh, continuing to pour from the area. But much of it now, is the the cloud of, of, of dust and uh, we have we, returned to a live this picture, is a live Pat. picture once again uh, th that cloud of dust is going to take a tremendous amount of time to settle and at that point we may have some better sense of of the damage and you can imagine uh, the difficulty that the firefighters that have got into the area there have in in working through that cloud of dust because it is such a harsh environment for them, even with their breathing apparatus. Uh, those air tanks last uh, a few minutes, and uh, we are now a uh, full two hours into this. Now, I understand that we have our news director, Peter Landis, in Midtown now with some reports on the telephone. Peter? Hi, Sharon. Is that, um, I, I'm not hearing you very well. A lot of breakups. But I can tell you that uh, right now I'm on 46th Street. I just veered off 11th Avenue because traffic is at a standstill. Um, I tried coming in for, I've been trying to come in for about the last, uh, ever since I got word, uh, from North New Jersey, uh, headed toward the Washington Bridge, and people were just uh, besides themselves. I passed a couple in the car. The, the wife was, was hysterical, basically, and the husband pretty much was, too. Big sign like I've never seen before that was lit up says, uh, George Washington Bridge closed, state of emergency. Uh, lots of rumors. People uh, uh, some of which I don't know will turn out to be true, and I don't want to repeat them now here on the phone. Uh, but basically, just lots of people disbelieving, looking at first at the smoke billowing from the Trade Center, then a short while later, looking back and seeing just smoke and seeing the Trade Center is gone. I did not actually see them collapse. Peter, had, yeah. I'm sorry, we're going to have to interrupt you for just a moment. We Go have ahead. the mayor in a live news conference, if you could just stand Go by. Ahead. Go ahead. Oh, he's okay. on the phone. I'm uh, sorry. Mayor, is the mayor speaking to us? Uh, mayor Giuliani, can you hear us? Mayor Giuliani? Is it? Okay, we understand he is coming momentarily on the telephone. Uh, and mayor Giuliani, are you with us on the telephone? Yes, we are going to hold for a moment. The uh, mayor will be with you momentarily. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll just keep the line open and uh, wait to hear Mayor Giuliani's voice if, if he can join us here. Uh, again, New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Uh, 
has been uh, in the area near the World Trade Center and uh, standing by to speak to us. Okay, let's just use this time, uh, this opportunity once more to describe what uh, parents can, to, to put some parents' minds at ease. Uh, students from PS 234 have been walked to PS 41. Students from PS 150 uh, have been walked or are being walked to PS 3, located at Christopher and Hudson Street. Hello? Hello. Who is this? It's Pat Kernan and Sharon Deasonhouse on the Hi, Pat. Desk. We are going to put the mayor on momentarily. Thank this you. Sonny Mandel. Okay. He's currently, I believe he's on the phone with the governor right now. Okay, okay. Sonny, right. while you do that, we will continue to let Please people Please just know interrupt us, schools. Sonny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, PS and IS-89 are being walked over to PS-41 as well. The location for PS-41, if you have any children at PS-IS-89, is 116 West 11th Street, and parents are urged to pick their children up there. Students from PS 234 also being taken to PS 41, 116 West 11th Street. And again, students from PS 150 taken to PS 3, located at Christopher and Hudson Street. And Sonny, are you still on the line with us as we wait for the mayor? No, we're just. Uh waiting for uh, Mayor Giuliani to join us by telephone for uh, an update. Uh, yes, we are. Okay. All right. Uh, are we still waiting for the mayor? Okay. You are about to be on with the mayor. Okay. Pat? Mayor Giuliani, it's Pat Kernan. I'm with Sharon Deason House here. I wonder if you could uh, give us an update of, of uh, the emergency operations well, right the now. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is take this opportunity to tell everyone to remain calm. And uh, to the extent that they can, to evacuate Lower Manhattan. Walk north. If you're in Lower Manhattan, walk north and get above Canal Street. Mm -hmm. Things will be a lot safer. We have as many police personnel and fire personnel as we can spare down there, and they'll help direct you out. But try to get out of Lower Manhattan. Mayor Giuliani, we should, we should stress, is, is there any immediate threat? This should be an orderly, calm evacuation at this point. Right now, everyone should, other than Lower Manhattan, where people should evacuate, and the police and fire will help you, everybody else should remain calm. They should remain at work or in school. We don't want them all out there uh, crowding things and making it difficult, because we're going to be moving people around to hospitals all over the city, and we need as, as much order as we possibly, uh, as we possibly can get. Mayor Giuliani, do you have any sense of the order of magnitude of injuries and uh, deaths? I do not, except to say that it's horrendous. It, uh, I was down there and watched it and saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. Oh. It's a horrible, horrible situation. I think right now what we have to focus on is saving as many of the people as we can save at this point and trying to bring some order to this. And then maybe later on we'll have a better sense of the magnitude of it. We have a lot of police officers, a lot of firefighters, a lot of emergency personnel that, it, that, would, that were down there. And the, the thing to do now is to evacuate Lower Manhattan in an orderly way. Just get above Canal Street and uh, then we'll, this way we'll have the space and the room for the ambulances and everyone else to operate. Mitchell. We're going to try to we're going to try to get subways down into Lower Manhattan so that so that people so that people can take the subway out the subway and we should have further information about that in a little while. That might help uh, alleviate some of the pressure in Lower Manhattan. We've been in contact with the White House and asked them to secure the space around the city. They've been doing that for at least the last hour, hour and a half. I've spoken to the governor several times. And the governor and I agree that the election today should be canceled. Yes. Mayor Giuliani, have the election, the election will, will, as soon as we can, we'll figure out an alternative date for it. But we need all the police personnel and everything else that we can to focus on uh, the evacuation effort. Absolutely. Mayor Giuliani, do you have any sense of what the status of the bunker is? Is it at all operational? Uh, that is right in the middle of uh, both the police department and uh, that area is all uh, cordoned off. We've moved uh, city government to the uh, to the firehouse in uh, Greenwich Village. That's where I'm operating from right now, and we'll probably operate from a police facility uh, in the area of Greenwich Village uh, shortly. Mayor Giuliani, everything, everything in Lower Manhattan, except for the people that are there for rescue efforts, uh, has been removed. We removed everyone from City Hall. We removed everyone from the police department, other than the most uh, necessary per communications personnel, and uh, we've moved up uh, above Canal Street. And that's what we're urging everyone to do. We literally walked out and helped uh, walk people out. And we're urging them all to get above Canal Street so that we have the fewest number of people down there possible and just those down there for the rescue effort. 
Mayor Giuliani, what uh, extent did we have as far as warning that this was happening? Was there, was there no any warning. indication? As far to as you? I know, there was no warning. Okay. There was no no one no one uh, made a threat. There was no warning. When uh, when I communicated with the White House, uh, they confirmed to me that the Pentagon had been attacked. I haven't even been able to, to see that. I, I, I see that I see the shots right now of uh, the World Trade Center, but I haven't seen what what happened to the Pentagon. Did the fire department uh, have any warning that the structures of the two World Trade Center towers were were compromised? Did they have some sense that they had to pull their people away no, we from were there? Actually, in a building uh, two blocks away when it crashed and had to uh, evacuate evacuate the building, and for a while was stuck in it. Uh, so I don't, I, and I can't tell you right now if they if they if they knew. And uh, uh, my recollection is when we were in the building, we probably had about a minute's notice, maybe two minutes. I understand that there have been reports that the uh, alleged hijackers communicated with uh, the air traffic control at Logan Airport indicating that a hijacking was in place. Did, have you heard any I such not, thing? I, I've heard that on the street, but I have, not heard, I have not had that confirmed. So there was no warning to New York? There was, there was no warning that, uh, that we know of. I have the police commissioner here with me. We had no warning, correct? No, we had no, we had no warning. Is there, there was any no warning. indication As far to as you? I know, there was no warning. There was no no one no one uh, made a threat. There was no warning when uh, when I communicated with the White House. Uh, they confirmed to me that the Pentagon had been attacked. I haven't even been able to to see that. I I, I see that I see the shots right now of uh, the World Trade Center, but I haven't seen what what happened to the Pentagon. Did the fire department uh, have any warning that the structures of the two World Trade Center towers were were compromised? Did they have some sense that they had to pull their people away no, we from were there? Actually, in a building uh, two blocks away when it crashed and had to uh, evacuate evacuate the building, and for a while was stuck in it. Uh, so I don't, I, and I can't tell you right now if they if they if they knew. And uh, my recollection is when we were in the building, we probably had about a minute's notice, maybe two minutes. I understand that there have been reports that the uh, alleged hijackers communicated with uh, the air traffic control at Logan Airport indicating that a hijacking was in place. Did, have you heard any I have such not, thing? I've, I've heard that on the street, but I have, not heard, I have not had that confirmed. So there was no warning to New York? There was, there was no like warning that, uh, that we know of. I have the police commissioner here with me. We had no warning, correct? No, we had no, we had no warning of any kind until the first plane hit, and then the second, and... and Mar Giuliani, since uh, we have New Yorkers listening, and, and obviously their again, thoughts are with urge, the people urge, who are down urge, there. Urge them to remain calm, to remain at home, or to remain at their place of business, unless they're in Lower Manhattan. By that I mean south of Canal Street. If you're south of Canal Street, get out, walk, and walk slowly, uh, carefully. There are plenty of police around, but just walk directly if you can't figure out what else to do, just walk directly north. That'll get you out of the dangerous smoke area. It'll also do us a big favor. It'll open up those streets because we're going to be moving a large number of ambulances and uh, emergency personnel in and out of there all day. I've talked to the governor. He is putting the National Guard on alert so that they can relieve our police officers and our firefighters later this afternoon. And we've asked the federal government for help uh, from, the, from the urban search and rescue team. So uh, right now, we're using all of our police and firefighters and emergency personnel to help the people down there. Later on, we're probably going to need uh, reinforcements. Mayor Giuliani, I realize that it must be uh, more than a chaotic situation, particularly since the, the bunker has been compromised and cordoned off. But can you give us any sense? There are so many people watching now who must have loved ones down in that area and are concerned I, uh, of, of the heart, systematic... My goes out to them. I've never seen yes. anything uh, like this. I, uh, was there from shortly after it happened and saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And all that I can tell them is that, that every resource that we have is attempting to rescue as many people as possible. And it, the end result is going to be some horrendous number of lives lost. I don't think we know yet. But, but right now, we have to just focus on saving as many people as possible. Can you give us a sense of if there is, in fact, some system being implemented, what that system is? and uh, what, where people are being taken? People, people are triaging. People are being taken to uh, every area hospital possible, even uh, virtually within minutes. Uh, I drove down right past St. Vincent's Hospital, and I could see them actually on the street ready uh, to take people, and that was within minutes of, of the, uh, for the, first, uh, the first airplane hitting the World Trade Center. So the, ho the hospitals are ready. Uh, we'll be moving them to all different area hospitals, uh, triaging them. 
the main thing is having those streets open so that we can get people in and out of the southern part of Manhattan as quickly as possible so that we can move them uh, you know, to hospitals all over the city. And Mayor Giuliani will, uh, will let you... In place. They're, they're doing it. Uh, we just need the cooperation of people in, in getting out of there. We'll let you get back to uh, the operations there, Thank and you, we do appreciate you taking the time for us here. Okay, but w once again, the only thing to do now is to remain calm and try to assist in the rescue effort. Thank you. Now let's pray. All of us. Thank you. Thank you again, and we hope to speak with you later on in the day. Mayor Rudolph Giuliani with uh, an update and uh, again his plea for an orderly evacuation of the area of Lower Manhattan surrounding the World Trade Center. He did not indicate uh, any additional uh, security threat there, but rather uh, just wants the opportunity for the police, fire and ambulance crews to get in and out of the area as efficiently as possible. So on that basis, uh, the mayor has asked the people who are in the area who are able to walk north and uh, get up into uh, the areas uh, into Midtown uh, should do so uh, in an orderly fashion. Right. He, it, one of the um, more concerning things that he said or didn't say was uh, that it was, it was very difficult to get him to enumerate what the structural plans were for, for sort of evacuating people and he had no sense of the order of magnitude of um, you know, numbers of people who were injured, numbers of people who had been transported, numbers of people who were in the building at the time. So these things we must wonder about and will be concerned about throughout the day until we get that information. Uh, simply a, a chaotic scene there and uh, the mayor described how unexpected all of the developments on this were. Uh, speaking uh, to the police commissioner who was at his side as he spoke to us live on New York One, Mayor Giuliani said that there was no warning that this uh, attack on uh, the World Trade Center was about to occur. There was no warning that the second attack was about to occur. And then once the uh, fire and police personnel moved in and thought they were dealing with uh, a fire that was confined to the top of the World Trade Center towers, uh, they quickly uh, heard that next explosion and the structure of the two towers was compromised. And uh, in relatively quick succession, the two towers ripped apart, uh, one of them at uh, uh, about 9.35, as I recall, and the second one uh, at about 10 o'clock this morning. 10.30, 10 10.28. 10 okay. Yes, and uh, again, Mayor Giuliani is just encouraging absolutely everyone who can get out of that area to get out of that area, Update. both to protect them and also to simplify the rescue efforts for the personnel who are in there trying to, to get the injured out. Update for you on commuter rail service now. Long Island Railroad trains are running on Long Island but are not coming into the city. Uh, they, are, uh, they are stopping them uh, before they get to, to Brooklyn. Uh, and Metro North, uh, trains are running as far as 125th Street, so they're, they're uh, coming into the station in Harlem, but not going any further than that. Pat, I'm just going to interrupt you for a moment. I understand that we have Arthur Chien on the phone who was stuck in a subway station and had to crawl out. Arthur, is that true? Well, I don't want to say too much. Let's Let's put it this way, what happened, we were told, on the subway system, I'm down at Spring Street along the 456 line, uh, was that AC power went out. This is approximately an hour ago, and uh, you have a number of trains, people uh, trying to head down, either uh, down to the Fulton Street area or through the Fulton Street area. Now, when we first got on the train, give you an idea, at around 9 o'clock is when I got the call to head down there, and I thought that by going underground it might be faster. Uh, we were warned that the trains would not be stopping at Fulton Street. That's obviously before the towers collapsed. Uh, when the towers collapsed, that probably uh, shorted out the AC. So uh, for the last hour or so, a number of subway trains all along the 456 line, certainly in this area, were frozen. Now we're told the reason why we couldn't move forward was uh, twofold. First, the loss of AC power made it impossible to move the train. And then when that was restored, when the signals were restored, uh, there was a problem of other trains being stacked in front of us that needed to be evacuated, and apparently one of those trains had mechanical difficulty as well. Not a lot of information coming down down here, however, and there's certainly a question uh, of whether or not the structure of the underground system has been compromised as a result of the towers collapsing. Obviously, until they determine, even if it hasn't actually punctured the surface of the street, they've got to wait to see if there's a threat of collapse within the subway system before they're, they're going to start running down there. And I heard the mayor ask people just to not to avoid that area altogether. Uh, if For those people who are in the subway system already, uh, it's too late uh, for the last hour or so. They're already down here. 
but uh, if you're planning on coming down in this part of town and thought maybe you could bypass it going to Brooklyn or coming from Brooklyn, uh, that might not be very wise. I think that's one of the reasons why that recommendation for people to stay at home or just to stay out of that uh, general vicinity uh, is really good advice. Uh, right now, we don't, we don't have much else on that, just that uh, you can't get through down here. Arthur, uh, yes. I'm sorry, at, th at this point we should just let you know as well that uh, all subway service in the city has been suspended for the time being. Oh, well that wasn't information that we were given down here. I mean, the, the conductor was running up and down trying to make sure that everybody could hear, but there really wasn't any information other than the fact that electricity was out. We were stuck because there are trains in front and behind us. Now, you, you, I hear some trains moving about. Uh, they're probably trying to evacuate the people that they already have in the system. There were a lot of people who obviously were a bit agitated. Uh, the air condition, the car that I was in was air conditioned, so people were okay. There was one woman who was getting claustrophobic, and passengers sort of came to her aid and gave her some advice on how to calm down. But um, obviously, if you're in a subway car that's not air conditioned, you probably see people passing out by now because we were stuck for over an hour. Arthur Chian, thank you, and uh, we will check back with you as you continue to monitor the developments on the subway system. There is, uh, despite the fact that you can hear the trains uh, moving around behind Arthur there, uh, we do not know of any, uh, any actual subway service other than sort of moving people who were on trains off trains, but the indication to us has been that they are, are uh, keeping the subway Suspended. system closed as a precaution and uh, trying to establish uh, if there is uh, any additional threat and if they can move those subways safely the weight of the collapse of those two world trade center towers would have come down uh, directly above the area that is home to many of the subway lines in lower manhattan and as arthur mentioned uh, it is uh, uh, far from the immediate priority to determine the the structures there uh, pat i'm just going to interrupt you for a moment we have andrew kurtzman on the line who is with the fire department, uh, with Mayor Giuliani at a fire department uh, station in Greenwich Village and was with him at the time of the collapse. Andrew? Sharon, I was uh, standing uh, alone on Chamber Street about an hour ago. It was deserted with about an inch of soot on the street. They were evacuating Chamber Street because they had had some kind of uh, fear of some kind of um, incident that might take place there. I don't think it came uh, to Andrew, pass. Andrew, sorry, just, just pause for one moment here. I just want to explain what we're looking at here. This is a videotape that's just been delivered back to New York One here of one of our crews as they were first responding to the scene. So this is, this is unedited videotape, and we're going to be looking at these images as you speak, Andrew. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Continue. No, look, feel free to interrupt me. I can't see the videotape, Pat, so uh, uh, I'm, at a, I'm at a disadvantage here. Mayor Giuliani, uh, appeared about 45 minutes ago on Chambers Street near Church Street. We began walking up Church Street when uh, the second building um, proceeded to collapse and a huge flume of smoke um, threw up into the air, went up into the air, and the mayor and his party started running up 6th Avenue. A plainclothes detective threw his arm around Mayor Giuliani as we took off, uh, not knowing what the repercussions of that second explosion would be. Uh, the emergency um, operations center near the World Trade Center is not being used um, for security reasons. Um, there was something of an odyssey that took place looking for a place to set up a makeshift command center. First, uh, the mayor and his party traveled to the Tribeca Grand Hotel. We walked into the lobby where they had cleared out the lobby to make room for this emergency uh, command station. The mayor uh, did not think it was satisfactory. We then went up further, probably another 10 blocks, to uh, an engine company in the West Village where uh, we stood outside a fire engine company that was locked. All the fire engines and all the personnel had been called down to the World Trade Center, and for about 10 minutes they tried to break into this fire station as the mayor stood by and the police commissioner stood by, waiting to set up an operations center. That's kind of uh, wanted to paint a picture of kind of the um, the seat of the pants operation that they've been forced to uh, construct here because of the explosion downtown. They've now taken residents up in a uh, in a, uh, a firehouse here. I'm watching uh, as we speak the mayor comfort some uh, people as they've uh, walked into the firehouse. He is in the chief's office right now. Um, Commissioner Carrick is here, several of the mayor's aides, some plainclothes detectives. And they are trying to construct what it literally took them years to construct uh, in a more permanent way, which is that uh, operation center downtown. And now it's all hinging on a small office here okay. in a firehouse in the village. Okay, in front of the, uh, the local school down there, PS 89. 
when I was talking to a friend and the bomb hit, we said we heard a big explosion. We went running and we saw the first one. And the school, the PS89, is right there. So all the parents that were there went in there, and the principal was calling. And then the police came, and they told us to stay in, but we decided that we'd prefer. I was in the World Trade bombing, the first one. And I just find it's better to take and leave, evacuate an area like that. And then my husband works Salmon Smith Barney, which is that building right in the firing line there, if you notice right below. And he saw the second plane go in. You saw the plane hit? Saw the second plane come what, in. Just describe for me what it looked like. It's either an Airbus or, or a 767. Just came up, swerved, yeah. aimed right into it. It didn't look like it was. It was trying. not an accident. Absolutely not. Aimed right to the middle. Aimed right to the middle of the second building. How scary is this? It's unbelievable. We it's just, we just, uh, it's just, it's, we, we just, and everyone just evacuated on their own. We want to stay away from any major public areas, anywhere there's public transportation. We just don't feel comfortable okay. right What's now. What's your name, man? Louise Burke. Louise B U R K E. Right. Joe Miller. Joe Miller. Right. M I L L E R Miller. Okay. All right, guys. Take okay. care. Right. Uh, down here in the middle of it. Uh, that was videotape. Uh, I would guess about 90 minutes ago. New York One reporter Andrew Siff uh, speaking to some of the people who were evacuating from Lower Manhattan. Uh, we are continuing to watch this videotape for the first time together. So it is uh, unedited videotape. So you may see uh, the camera jump from time to time. But this is tape uh, after the first plane crash at the World Trade Center, after the second plane crash but before as people both were buildings evacuating. had or, collapsed. You can still see two standing World Trade Center buildings. On the left side of your screen, you're looking at the live picture from that scene now. And uh, you can see the contrast between the two How's pictures, the World Trade Center buildings uh, no longer standing, a massive amount of dust and debris in their place in Lower Manhattan. And uh, I, do we have this? Uh, okay, I understand uh, now. We had a chance to speak with Mayor Giuliani just a few moments ago. Here is what he had to say. Uh, to the extent that they can to evacuate Lower Manhattan, walk north. If you're in Lower Manhattan, walk north and get above Canal Street. Mm -hmm. Things will be a lot safer. We have as many police personnel and fire personnel as we can spare down there, and they'll help direct you out. But try to get out of Lower Manhattan. Mayor Giuliani, we should, we should straight. So obviously Mayor Giuliani trying to get people out of the area in order to help the personnel uh, to remove those who have been injured and uh, in order to be able to do their job as they must do. Also, uh, we didn't hear this, Mayor Giuliani calling for calm. Uh, this uh, videotape again shot uh, uh, well over an hour ago. This was uh, just in the minutes after the explosion that ripped down the first of the two towers to collapse. You can see at that point people running away, just having no idea uh, what the threat was. Uh, it was uh, in the moments that we saw when both towers were still standing, a, a more orderly evacuation. But then there was that explosion uh, through to World Trade Center initially, the, the South Tower uh, that collapsed. And, and this is just in those few minutes uh, as people uh, just uh, ha had no idea what they were dealing with and were running for safety, trying to get out of the footprint of any sort of debris that might have fallen. Also, I have uh, seen on, and actually I don't even know which television station it was, report that part of the Pentagon has now collapsed as well. And, and we should uh, put this into the context of the national situation because although New York City was hit first with these two uh, terrorist attacks, planes crashing into the towers of the World Trade Center in rapid succession, there was, following that, the plane that was crashed into the Pentagon, there was a car bomb outside the State Department and uh, there is a report that uh, there is a large jetliner crashed at an airport near Pittsburgh. Uh, that one uh, appears, uh, from what we're seeing, to have uh, not been targeting a building, but uh, still we need to get information on uh, what's been happening this, at the area We are now looking at a live picture of the Pentagon. You can't uh, tell exactly where, what area has collapsed. Obviously, it is on the other side of the Pentagon from uh, our perspective. Again, an an eerily, sickeningly familiar sight of billowing smoke. Now we're back uh, here at, at the World Trade Center area. Um, a disaster of, un, I would say, unprecedented magnitude. There, there, I, mean, I simply can't, uh, 
can't think of a, a, a news story of this, uh, this magnitude and, and a disaster. This is the videotape uh, when only one of the two towers remained standing. And uh, you, you can uh, watch here, I think the, the explosion is uh, about to occur as we, we watch this videotape. The fire was burning. Uh, they had moved in personnel in the area to try to fight the fire, uh, but what was unknown to everybody was uh, uh, just how fragile the structure of the World Trade Center was. And one wonders whether some of it was, was weakened uh, in the 1993 bombing, or whether in fact it simply wasn't structurally sound enough to sustain this. If, uh, if, in any case. If there's something that uh, was uh, a, a mitigating circumstance here, uh, you would have to consider it lucky that the aircraft hit the top of the tower uh, rather than the bottom because as you saw uh, with the explosion originating at the top uh, it, it collapsed floor by floor upon itself and, and that would have minimized the footprint of that debris and by minimizing the footprint of the debris I, I'm still talking about an area of blocks and blocks around the World Trade Center easily but, 15 blocks square but, but had the explosion been at the base of the tower and, and in some way uh, compromise the structure at the base of the tower. It's a quarter of a mile tall, right. and uh, for, for it to topple over uh, would have been much more devastating than the situation which developed, which, uh, which is already devastating see, beyond uh, right, imagination. Right, I mean, uh, we must be grateful to some extent uh, for what didn't happen, but what has happened is, is, is unfathomable. Uh, when we spoke to Mayor Giuliani earlier, uh, he was describing his own uh, movement into the area. They uh, immediately tried to get into the area to uh, learn of what this difficulty was. The city's emergency operations center is in the World Trade Center complex. They quickly found that that was not an option for them. And, and as Richard Kurtzman described, uh, they tried to find another place from which to coordinate this operation. So the emergency operations in that sense are, are crippled. Right. And so they're now working out of an, an engine company in Greenwich Village. I guess uh, what is presumed to be as safe or as safe a distance from the area as possible. The bunker, unfortunately, which was just completed, has been cordoned off and uh, is, of course, in the center of the World Trade Center area. So uh, is of it's no use uh, after. Uh, let's, let's listen in to this uh, raw on. videotape. Got the initial fall, got the debris, turned my camera around like this, and ran up to where we are now, which must be 10, 12 blocks away from the scene. I'm exhausted. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. Uh, 